हेलो 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 वेलकम एवरीवन टू दिस लाइव स्ट्रीम हाउ आर यू दोस्तों आई एम करेंटली इन कनाडा इन माय अपार्टमेंट हियर एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डू डीप डाइव इनटू द कैंडिडेट्स विद वन एंड ओनली अनीश गिरी इट्स गोइंग टू बी ग्रेट फन अनीश इज गोइंग टू जॉइन अस लेट मी सी इफ आई कैन गेट ऑल ऑफ यू इन द चैट हु नोस देयर विल बी स्पेशल गेस्ट्स एक्सपेक्टिंग some uh, great players to join in hopefully that works out you know uh, there is no uh, you know for this stream only thing i wanted to do was invite anish to talk to him about the candidates talk to him about the new uh, chess base video course which we had launched and then one thing led to another and who knows what will happen next uh, so guys first of all very warm welcome to you i have you know i've set up the board and all for anish to join uh, i will become smaller then anish can sit up there but um, before he comes people are saying call hans call kalsan call uh, call ye call wo <laughs> are dosto i i actually scheduled the stream today only then amruta clicked start streaming yesterday for the live stream of candidates and it started on this stream only and then she res- rescheduled it wrong and all of that happened but now we are okay so increase karo volume increase karo theek hai volume in- dosto volume theek hai kya kya problem hai i will increase the volume for you uh, but one of the main things that we want to do today is talk about the candidates because now we are just two rounds away dosto kya lagta hai what are what are your feelings do you think who do you think will win maybe i should have a poll yes on this maybe i should have a poll uh, because there are four names and either youtube poll mein we can have four names that we can put up so i'm going to put up a, a poll let's see if i can um add start a poll who will win candidates 2024 okay nepo clearly the big guy hikaru bhai 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 three wins in a row kya hi bole uska karwana half a point behind the field and the one and only guki we're going to call him guki so पोल लगा दिया है दोस्तों फ्लैंक जी थैंक यू सो मच फॉर योर सुपर चैट सो मुझे ऐसे लगता है दोस्तों आई फील दैट वॉट एवर हैपन्स द फैक्ट दैट गुकेश हैज अ चांस ऑलरेडी इन द लास्ट टू राउंड इट सेल्फ इज अ वेरी वेरी बिग थिंग बहुत बड़ी बात है so before anish comes in and i get his thoughts we are also going to discuss openings one of the things and uh, one more thing which we want to discuss together is by the way these are the standings is his chess base course where i went to his home and we recorded it it got released yesterday and so all those who had pre ordered it got to ask one question to anish so we actually mailed everyone who had bought it and then these are the questions that have been sent by by each one who had bought so we are going to ask anish all these questions who we will answer quickly around 10 12 questions are there and guys if you want to get this please check it out i can just show you very quickly before anish comes in because after anish comes i want to uh, focus more on uh, you know talking to him and so on so this is uh, let's see how it looks so that you have an idea if i ye kya so this is how it looks and it works on windows mac everywhere it works online uh, on uh, you can stream it so aisa hai so these are different openings correct i've just downloaded it so let's say if you go to ruy lopez the ruy lopez has now a video here there's also a game database so i can click here and then the game database opens and this was also built so then you have analysis here aise pura ruy lopez ka this is addition additional material over and above that and uh, there is the video here 
so if you click here the video will work i will ask me for stream key which i have not put in so i will put it later but it will look like this anish we go to first the spanish opening or the ruy lopez it right. is one of let the... me let me make sure that the sound is heard because i just installed it right now i need to <laughs> i need to put the stream key but okay i need to this is how you will get the key when you will popular openings in the world of chess yes definitely and also uh, so in, we, in my own games we talk uh, about it and then uh, different different openings so ye this is all uh, no no anish will come guys live mein aayega wo abhi i'm just showing this is volume 1 it has ruy lopez it has italian it has petrov it has scotch it has sicilian it has french it has caro khan bhai caro khan mein jo uska jo kahani hai the story which he tells for caro khan i want to make you listen to it one second From the French, Anish, we now go to the link, Karo Khan. Link is and Karo there Khan in is the something you played. You eight. can check it out. I will recommend. Okay, by the way, uh, I should have put the key beforehand. Anyway, uh, because I just downloaded before the stream. Yeah, pura time to I am in the candidates. So the thing is, um, he talks about an opening, then tells one of his favorite games in it, then tells you a story also of this opening. So Karo Khan me tells a beautiful story about his grandmother. It is very cute, very nice. You can also find it on YouTube because that is one intro chapter that Chess Base has put up. So these are all the openings in Volume One. Let's see what is there in Volume Two. Volume Two is all about D4 mainly, and so here you will see this is Volume Two. So you have Queen's Gambit accepted, Semi Slav, Queen's Gambit declined, Nimzo Indian, Grunfeld, King's Indian, Benoni, London system, English opening, Reti system, Nimzo. So the idea is not to give you a repertoire like, oh, if opponent plays this, you play this. This is mainly to give you a sense of all the openings almost that exist in the chess, and give a very basic idea of it. So then you know, oh. Benko is like for long term compensation. Benoni is aggressive. Kings Indian, I can fight for a win. Queens Gambit accepted, a little more calm. Queens Gambit declined, very solid. And so when you know all of these things, you can then say, "Ha, I want to learn this now." And this was always a problem. Like people would say, "Which opening should I play? Which opening should I not play?" And they did not have idea of all the openings. So when I went to Anish's place, I told him, "Let's make a course where we cover all openings." Don't let's not go in deep into it because if we went deep into each opening, it would be like an each course for one four hours for each opening. It will go on for like hundreds of hours. But we will just touch upon the most important parts of it. You give your thoughts and you give your one favorite game in that. So if you see when we talk about um, the first one here, for example, this one, uh, then in Ruy Lopez. the game there is a game database also there is giri versus carlson his favorite game is beaten magnus in that opening then when we talk about some and what we did is over and above what he has taught we started creating database so that you have some things some notes these are not high quality notes or you know like anish has prepared them or something is something prepared by us based on the videos that he've made i have added my good friend atul dahale has contributed to this so we together made this and so you have now a very nice sort of a database here so karo khan advanced variation you have something then you have exchange variation something uh, main line you have something and so on theek hai are dosto candidates related stream hai anish is going to join in in 5 minutes so before he comes in i want to do we need chess based software no it's not needed it can open directly but if you have it it you can save stuff better but you can directly open it no you don't need chess base 17 by the way uh, it is there in the description volume 1 and 2 together is for 2000 plus gst volume 1 uh, is for 1199 plus gst volume 2 is 1199 plus gst if you are not in the regions that chessbase softwares chessbase india can sell you can buy from chessbase.com all the links are there so please check it out okay i tried ordering from canada no you have to get it from chessbase.com anish till fi- uh, where is anish giri let's ask anish giri 
भाई विवेक देसाई इज रीच हंड्रेड के क्या बात है अमेजिंग अमेजिंग विल इट वर्क ऑन मल्टीपल डिवाइसेस रोहित संजीव वन की कैन वर्क थ्री टाइम्स सो दैट इज द थिंग दिस मैक कंपैटिबल यस रोहन डीएमजी फाइल यू विल गेट इट इज परफेक्टली मैक कंपैटिबल सोमिया दीप से सागर भाई प्लीज ब्रिंग मोर कोर्सेज लाइक दिस भाई फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी वॉन्ट टू सी हाउ दिस डज विथ अनिश uh and then we will see if anish enjoy anish enjoyed it i'll ask him if did he enjoy because i went to his home this is uh, how we recorded it it was like we created his um home into a studio this is his uh, home and there we recorded we had a very nice camera uh and then we we recorded this thing and it was between wizen house that i went in germany and then prague masters we had four five days and amruta and i say asked anish like can we come there and then we had a wonderful time recording but also with his family so it was very nice yes yes ab uh, ab uh, adel tamid uh, chess base india does service to bangladesh for chess base software so please uh, go ahead and and get it manasvi mishra says this is a great concept to explore many openings through stories of one top player and not just you know the thing is What I realized is Anish has played all openings. मतलब तुम देखो कोई भी opening अगर देखो suppose for example Petrov defense we have a database you will have Anish Giri game in it and Anish also has annotated you know like there are so many beautifully annotated games in the database that Anish has done in the mega database before which we could so here you can see all different uh, Sicilians are there and by the way a huge huge shout out to the chess base team and Pascal. who has worked really hard on this so here you can see all open matlab dosto if you want a if you want like one opening and perfect move by move analysis this is not for you this is to understand the full terrain okay that is the thing hans has tweeted kya what tweet uh yes ganpati pilla you can use on mobile when you will buy it you will get a key you can go to videos.chessbase.com put in that key and it can stream be streamed from phone tablet anything so there is a way to also do that anish on his stream oh anish is there let's go anish bye i have sent him the zoom link so it's going to be epic i'm i have all the questions ready kd stances sagar shah i just want to say i love you are dosto thank you kd bye uh i want to tell you that tomorrow at 11 am in canada in toronto in the bellwood trinity park sorry trinity bellwoods park we are going to meet at 11 am there's a first ever meet up i think i've never done a meet up even in india because i didn't never needed to because there is the chess club we have at phoenix market city i would come there every saturday but i think this is the first time ever i'm doing a meet up and i'm so excited who knows do jan aayenge ek jan aayega zero maybe 20 will come maybe 50 will come i have no clue but tomorrow you will come we'll we'll you know meet we'll talk you know it's a good way to connect to each other chess community and then we'll go to the playing venue wahan pe it'll be fun and yeah yo we have the man the myth one second let me show i want to i want to get him on the stream in a way where you know like aise must dikhega aisa nahi ki छोटा सा चेहरा होगा उसको वेट लेट मी सी हाउ कैन आई गेट हिम इन अ ब्यूटिफुल वे ओके यस नाउ वी आर सेट सेट हेलो सर हेलो अनीश How are you doing, Anish? Can you switch? Oh no, you cannot switch on your camera. No, no, I can, I can. But you are on your stream, so I got worried. Uh, I can give you another camera, worst case. Oh, oh, pro streamer. Why are you so happy, sir? It's going to be very bad camera. So it's okay, uh, guys. If you want to watch me in HD, you have to go to my channel, exclusive. Ah. <laughs> you <laughs> get some, you get some trash cameras, I got. Oh, it's actually pretty good. Whoa, hey, the in the house, good. guys! This is yeah. the man, sir. I think the one which hmm. we used to record the chess base course is on oh. your stream. 
Yes. No, no. The one which we use for a chess-based course is too good. It's now what hiding. What you are not using at all now? Uh, no, no. Only for special occasions because it's it's in the middle of the room. Remember, I like my table uh, attached to the wall and everything. Okay. I mean, my wife I likes thought, my table I attached to the wall. I thought you will be using it so nicely because you won your title Tuesday using it. Now you have true, to... true, 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 true. <laughs> but it's uh, it's a little. I like the aesthetics are better like this, and the normal camera is fine, good enough. But for special occasion, for courses, I will do the uh, epic camera you gave me for sure. You know, you know, Anish, uh, I've been uh, sort of in touch with you through messages and all, but I'm seeing you in person after a long time. It feels like. What like do you mean, Sagar? We did a bunch of uh, streams, no? You didn't come on the last one. We did such a big one with some. No, I was there. You are, sir. You are completely out. You are no, sleeping. I was you, there. You I was building in toilet. This terrible phone. You made this toilet. This no, no. I was on toilet building yeah, toilet. Come you, on. You look now like as calm. You know, we have one hour, so feeling good uh -huh. now. Sir, one second. I have to uh, see how do I get you. Um. Oh, I am seeing your. Okay. 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 Sir, there can is I a, see your sir, camera? There is a tweet by Hans Niemann. It seems. Uh, can. Uh, I don't know. Twitter game, you are the expert. So, <laughs> uh, sir, can do you know uh, if I can see you? If I can put your camera on my, I don't see you have your camera, yeah, or what? You don't have did, the camera. Did I how? not start on Zoom? I don't think so. On Zoom, there is a virtual camera. You can see yourself and me. You just put that; it's there for everyone. But you are very small there, yeah. Ah, uh, yes. I can make myself bigger like this. Yeah, that's better. Okay, wait. Now let me try to. So then you can Ooh. make, uh, but then you can't have that exclusive content on your channel. No, sir. Exactly. I want to have uh, on my channel. High Guys, high go and myself. subscribe to AG's channel. Get him to 200k. AG, where are you right now? No, no, no. Sa Sagar, you're completely out. I am long past 200k. You're, you need to get some sleep, sir. You're completely out. I saw this reel with you and the Rook. I mean, you are just uh, completely gone. So you need to get some sleep. I have some breakfast. I thought you were at 196k. No, no, I'm already a long time cross 200k, sir. Oh, Come really? on, you know me. If I need to cross, I cross, yeah? Oh my god. Um, wait, uh, it's a window capture, yeah, I think? Yes. Wait, I should put the... Sorry, sorry. I should put the studio mode because I know this myself. Oh, I'll ruin something Oh, studio again. mode is like going pro, sir. Yeah, yeah, it's a pro. It's a pro, sir, yeah. Window capture, I think. 202k. Wow. How did you gain 6k subscribe by streaming title Tuesday? Yes. No, no, no. Yeah. I farmed Levy. <laughs> 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 I just farmed Levy. But it's fine. It's fine. He liked it. Um, let me see. But to get 6k mm. subscribers without streaming much is like epic. Epic. Wunsch Art says, please upload all variations of Queen's Gambit by Wunsch G. See, I'm going to show you this. Uh, Anish, I was just before you entered, I was showing mm -hmm. them our course. And I will also you show showing, you yeah? because you will also have not seen the final product. So that's true. That's true. Let me let me also do. But sir, it's dangerous for me to watch my own course because it's for noobs. What if I become a noob myself <laughs> after watching it? <laughs> OK, I got you. Now your head is also there. Wow. Well, even your logo is there, sir. You there, wherever you go, your logo comes along, yeah. <laughs> Such a pro marketing. <laughs> By the way, I finished the podcast with uh, Danny Ranch. My God, he's such a machine. Today you did a podcast. No, no, I listened. I listened to your podcast ah. with Danny Ranch. I finished it. Oh, how did you like it, sir? Yeah, amazing, amazing. But sometimes he starts talking about this corporate stuff. He's such a pro. I have a feeling that he's like. He talks on autopilot. I have a feeling that he's sleeping and talking at the same time. He yeah. gives this giant speech about how they are, uh, you know, like the whole thing is like all like it's epic. How they are, especially when it comes to his vision, it's already so much on his, you know, it's an autopilot. Yeah, community building and so on. Yeah, yeah the whole vision thing with uh, we want chess.com to be the place, the best place to work and uh, how we are there. All, you know, our uh, all our employees are happy and the whole, we have the vision and this is like so smooth. I mean, uh, total, total machine, Danny Ranch. So good. Okay. So good. <laughs> I don't know what to say, but it was nice. And yesterday I also interviewed uh, Lee, no, Chess, he's a pro. Lee Chess uh, uh, CEO. 
Oh, really? Yes. Thibault, Thibault, yeah? No, not Thibault is the co is the founder, but CEO, uh -huh. like the operations officer. Ah, okay. He's What's like his name? maybe one of the top guys. He's Theo. What's Theo his is his name. Theo. Oh, I know him. Is he CEO? No. Yes, yes. yes. He's CEO. Yes. Wasn't he just a lawyer? Yes, but now he's operations officer of uh, Leeches. Oh, they promoted him because he just was their lawyer, no? No, no, now he's full time. I knew him as just a lawyer. Yeah, yeah he's a lawyer, uh, but now he's oh, he got. Work. I think he got promoted. I don't. I didn't know yeah, that yeah. thing actually. Yeah, but it's been quite some time. He came here. Mm -hmm. He's he travels to many tournaments, and so we mm -hmm. talked about many things. Uh, so now it, it's, it was like, uh, of course, chesscom, but there's also Lee Chess interview, and so people get to know all the stories. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Nice. No, but my what I like about you know Danny Danny Rensch's uh, podcast because. Uh, you know, people who are visionary, basically what it is, they basically see the future. Yeah, that's the point. Mm -hmm. And they they predict the future. That's what they do. And he is one of those people who is able to, uh, given information he has, he's trying to predict the future. And now and sir, ev step ahead. everyone thinks and he thinks that documentaries are the future of content. And well, it's quite clear, yeah. But he's basing it, of course, on uh, I mean, it's it, because you know he sees what's happening in the world, and then he he tries to do that in chess, mm. and that's very logical. I was always saying, for example, this drive to survive in Formula One. Yes, yes, yes. You you had told to me as well. Yes, he's the way to go. It was clear to me too. But he also has the resources to make it happen. Like you know, I, for example, I can also think something, but I don't have any resources. But he has got this big company with uh, employees and the contacts and the money and everything. Um, I mean, I don't have the money. I first need to sell my courses. Yeah, then I'll. <laughs> so talking about your courses, let's let's talk about it very quickly because we have to discuss about candidates. What is this? Oh, chess. No, I just saw a pen on my table. It's Chessify pen. It's so beautiful. I just realized it. So it's a little commercial of Chessify here also. <laughs> come on, come on! You have to promote your course here. You are promoting Chessify. No, but Chessify helped me make my course always. <laughs> they are the <laughs> for noobs. Yeah, yeah. Sir, so are we going to first promote the course or talk about? Let's just give um, talk a little bit about my friendship with Gukesh, sir. I always told you, no, that Gukesh is the one. Remember, I always told you he's the one, <laughs> right? Yes, you always used to say he's the younger one Youngest. by a few years. Yes, so that's sir. why it will make a difference. Exactly. And I was saying, exactly. But how can one year or one and a half year make such a huge difference? And then what did I say? And you said you will see. Exactly, is what I said. Now, sir, what I am seeing now with Gukesh is exactly what I saw with Prague a year ago. This age of 17 to 18, it's a crucial age. You know, sir, that all this stuff's 18 years old. You know, it's a milestone, right? Mm -hmm. uh, seven years old, big milestone in many different cultures. For example, in um, uh, Orthodox culture, the um, Orthodox uh, religion, yeah? From seven years old, uh, when you go to church, uh, this is when you start uh, confessing to your sins. Oh. Because you become uh, like conscious, when you are right? Seventeen. Seven, seven, not seven. Seven. Oh, seven. seven. Uh. When uh, also, for example, um, when in Russia, when you go to school, uh, at seven is when you start going to school. In Holland, uh, at seven you go to the third grade. This is when you start learning uh, reading and um, writing and letters and everything and numbers and uh, uh, summing, uh, addition, subtraction. You start learning at seven. So this is not an accident. You can see with people at seven something happens to them. Big, big uh, breakthrough. From six to seven, this one year is huge. 17 to 18, that's a huge year, sir. It's not an accident. accident. Everything is 18 plus, 18 plus. Why 18 plus? Because from 17 to 18, something happens to you. And that happens the same uh, to chess players. And I kid you not. Really? I played Prague. I played Prague in the Champions Chess Tour from 17 to 18. I played him throughout the tour. The start of the tour and the end of the tour. I played like three, four matches with him. Every match I play him, I see... Three months happen in between. I see it's different players playing. There's evolution. He's better every time, significantly stronger, like a different player. So you are very, and we uh, see the same thing. Anish, you are very serious about what you are saying, the 17 to 18. Yes. This is like, I thought it was started as a joke, like, you know, 17 is 18 must also be nice, 16 must, be, but like now you are very much focused on this 17 to 18. No, of course. This, I'm, I'm telling you that this whole, this, this number, like seven or eighteen, like there, uh, twenty-one also is a number, yeah. In many countries, because you can start, in some countries you start driving for twenty-one or like uh, drinking twenty-one, like taking conscious decisions. Like these numbers, they are not there by accident. Um, 
And uh, this is the reason uh, why you see the same with Gukesh. I seen him play um, at the start of when he's 17 years old. And now uh, every few months you see him play, he's becoming stronger and stronger and stronger just by just with every every month. And, um, you know, if he qualifies now, as I always said, my favorite prodigy, <laughs> my best friend, Gukesh for, for a few months not, right? What do you mean? <laughs> like when you both were uh, to competing together, you know, for the top spot in FIDE circuit. So. No, of course. Uh, yes, of course, of course, of course. But, you know, you, sometimes you have to compete with your friends. Like, yes, you know, I played that I match with Vidya. I, I completely agree with you that when you were sort of when Gukesh was around 2600, around that uh, range in 2021, you still were, were sp speaking very highly of him. Right from CSL when he was in your team, of King course. Slayers. Uh, yes yes and now do you do you see him in this tournament to be playing at a very high level yes of course is what i mean he's shown a very universal chess he uh, defended slightly worse position with caruana extremely extremely yes. accurately yes. extremely accurately he uh, on demand beat an outsider with black something he didn't manage to do even in london just a mm. few months ago mm. He played his 2400 guy. Yes. He couldn't come close. Yes. Today, yesterday was a completely different story. He played like a machine the whole, uh, more or less. There was some inaccuracy one moment. But after that, he recomposed himself, found this G5 idea, and again managed to manage to win. So uh, he's done it in all sorts of different ways. He's evolving, yeah? He's playing uh, tactical chess, positional chess, everything. Also, he's, and he's getting better by, rounded, by right? Here? He's getting He's getting around gradually. He's gradually getting... He was not around at all. Mm. But gradually, he's uh, like he had major. Uh, he probably still has major gaps in his understanding. You know, some of his games, like against me, for example, uh, the game in uh, Vikan Zay this year. There were some, you know, clearly uh, very immature decisions were made there in that game. Uh, but uh, he's growing, you know, by uh, like uh, in front of our eyes, and uh, he's the you know the the only Indian contender right now uh, yes. to win this. Uh, this tournament and this, um, this is very important question i want to ask you anish who do you think because you know there are all the people talking about this but you have played the candidates you know what the pressure is like and you know who is the favorite here also i'm going to put up the next round's pairings here so that we have an idea so these are the pairings of the 13th and 14th round which are left uh, what is your feeling do you think Hikaru? Do you think Nepo? Do you think Gukesh? Or do you think Fabi has an outside chance considering he is now flowing, sort of? I think Fabi's chances are much better than uh, people would uh, expect. Fabi is very much, uh, very much on the menu. He's got this last round shot, right? He's got the last round shot. He has to play Nepo, yes. Yes, yes. Um, and... You have to understand. So let's see the pairings, Sagar. Show us, show us the pairings. We have to understand a few things. I want to talk to you about the pairings. A few important things. Show us the pairings. So these are the pairings. Let me run through a few important pairings. So no matter what, no matter what, in the last round, Fabiano uh, is... Uh, if Fabiano is not going to win the next game, which is probably not happening. So, so look, Prague already lost the chances, right? Yes. Although, wait... Um, no, Prague there is a, a scenario. Can you show us the standing once again? If Prague, okay, Prague can score two points. out of two. Six points. Now, then seven and a half guy will definitely yeah. reach eight and a half. One of them. Yeah. So Prague is out. Prague has no chance. So that means that uh, Prague is not going to... And you know, okay, there is money at stake, yeah? Three and a half thousand euro. For per... every half point. So if you yes, score two out of two, you are winning $14,000. Yes, yes, yes. Are yes, but it, what I mean is draw is also three and a half thousand. So what I mean is Prague has no incentive to um, so just to burn himself, right? Uh, and just lose. So Prague is going to play normal. Hmm. When Prague plays normal with White, um, he is not likely to lose. Yeah. So uh, Fabi is most likely to make a draw. Okay. Also, his game with Gukesh was uh, a draw with Black. He didn't get chance. So most likely that game is a draw. Uh, Nepo against Hikaru. Nepo, he has this coasting mode thing very often. And when he's in a coasting mode, he cannot play for a win. Now he might get a little bit tilted seeing that others caught him, but I think he won. So I, most likely that game is also a draw. Yeah, so let's assume that these two games are drawn, okay? Let's assume it. 
So Nepo goes to eight, Hikaru goes to eight, and Fabi yes. goes to seven and seven and a half. half. Let's put Gukesh uh, on hold for now. Let's put Gukesh on hold. So uh, let's look at the last round situation um, in that case. Mm. So Fabi Nepo is a must win for Fabi, right? Yes. And he has That's white. In any case. He has white. He's white. So and if Fabi uh, wins that game. Hikaru, uh, let's then, put then, Gukesh then on. Fabi a... goes ahead yes. of Nepo because Nepo is on eight. Yes. Fabi goes yes. to eight and a half. Yes, but Hikaru, yeah. if Hikaru draws two games, will be shared then with Fabi. Yes. In that scenario. Eight and a half. Yes. Now uh, you have to understand. So if Gukesh is going to make a draw in the round 13, then um, let's say all the relevant games are drawn in round 13. Mm -hmm. Let's imagine that. Mm -hmm. Then we have a very clear situation for last round. We have Hikaru playing Gukesh and Fabi playing Nepo. Fabi in the must win. Hikaru uh, playing Gukesh with white, very pragmatic Hikaru. As usual, no real big uh, opening ideas. Never had Hikaru, never big, uh, never with white. With white, never anything huge. Gukesh solid, Berlin, uh, he can play. Berlin, he plays. Uh, Hikaru, never anything. Like he 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 can play some position, but nothing revolutionary ever. Also, he likes to play also, some position. Uh, Gukesh cannot play very solid. Yeah, like he goes knight g seven with Nepal. No, no, no. He will. Gukesh will play for yeah, this game. He will play think. solid. Yeah, yeah. Berlin, Berlin. I guess Hikaru is fine. No, no. Hikaru uh, will basically go for draw. That's clear to me in that situation ah. because Hikaru wants a rapid tiebreak. Correct. Right. Hikaru wants a rapid tiebreak. Hikaru will go for a draw and will hope that Nepo doesn't win with black. Mm. Which is possible, of course, because Fabi might overpress. So Hikaru maybe will play a little bit, but it's hard to play a little bit, yeah? I mean, you play Gukesh, yeah? you don't play, uh, uh, you know, your uncle or something, yeah? You play Gukesh, so it's not so easy. So uh, what we are expecting, what, what we have to realize is actually then, if Gukesh uh, makes a draw in round 13, he will probably get an easy game in round 14 and get the tiebreak. But the problem for Gukesh is he doesn't want the tiebreak, maybe. Also, Gukesh with white against Firuja, I think he will go all out. No? Mm, I think basically Gukesh's decision should be, does he mind the tiebreak? Because if he gets a draw with Alireza, most likely there will be a tiebreak. Yes, yes, I agree. I agree. Yes. So this is unless, the decision now. Unless Karuana beats Prague. Yeah, but then with anyway black. tiebreak most likely. No, but then Karuana also but, then but beats then Nepo. And no, he no, just then, no, 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 no. If, if Fabi already beats Prague, he'll be so thrilled, he'll make a draw with Nepo. With just white? Somehow. With white. Yeah, somehow. You, not you not feel, from start. So my question is, you feel all the players, if they have the tiebreak easily in hand, they go for it rather than going for the sole first position. Not all, not all. Uh, those who are chasing always dream of tiebreak. That's a, that's a famous that's psychological what, uh, thing. Fa Fabi said yesterday also, if I get a yes. tiebreak, I'll be very happy. Exactly. So Fabi wants a tiebreak. Hikaru was chasing throughout the whole tournament. He wants a tiebreak. He also is a good and rapid blitz. Nepo has been lead. He has, Nepo he has been leading. So he's a little bit tilted, and the one who was leading doesn't want the tiebreak usually. But he has black with Fabi, so nobody asks him what he wants. Mm. He just has to survive. Uh, Guki, Guki basically wants to win the white game against Alireza, regardless. That's clear. He wants to win the next game, but not not at all cost. He will not burn all the bridges. So if Guki beats Alireza, last round Hikaru has to beat him. Yes, yes, which which is possible, right? Like Hikaru with white Very possible. can can really yeah pass. yeah yeah that will be uh, uh, epic. So if we have we could have a situation. Where Hikaru has to beat Guki and Fabi has to beat Nepo. Yes. And if they both do it, then both the Americans reach the top, but uh, Hikaru is half a point ahead. So Yes, it depends on the situation. If Fabi makes only a draw, and then so it, it depends. It's also possible that Nepo beats Hikaru in round 13. Oh yes, yes. We it's possible that Nepo it. beats Hikaru in round 13, Fabi makes a draw, and then Hikaru beats Gukesh in the last and Gukesh makes a draw. Hikaru beats Gukesh last round, Fabi beats Nepo last round. And then they all share. It's also possible. Yes, all can. But uh, tell me this: according to you, of all the four players who have a chance, who is playing the best chess right now in terms of quality? Um, in terms of quality, uh, I think 
throughout the entire event it's Gukesh, of course. Mm. Uh, Fabi, of course, also very high level. But the thing is with Fabi, his base level is so high that it will be always high. Like Fabi, he he's always gonna play high level chess. Like it's just he, he's just you know seasoned professional. For his standards, Fabi is playing a little bit, little bit uninspired difficult. chess. No, he's playing a little uninspired. Uh, he's you know he's under pressure. He's playing like a guy who is great. But it's under pressure. Like Carlson plays World Championship matches the same way. Mm-hmm. Like a very strong player that is under pressure, so he cannot show his full uh, potential. But he's still very, very strong. And he's still doing everything right. He's preparing. He's doing all the things. He's like Carlson in World Championship matches, exactly like that. He's still getting all these points, but it's so difficult. And it's not how it is when he's on a roll. But it still could be good enough. But it's but it's currently not. Gukesh, of course, throughout the whole tournament showed the most uh, stable... Uh, Chess Hikaru in the second half has been very good. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, basically, he, no. Like basically, he, no. Sorry, Hikaru. Only if Hikaru, only games with Vidit were bad. The rest is good. Yesterday, his game with Firuja was very good quality. And apart from like few moves where he lost his advantage from opening the way he sacked the pawn and this calculation with Queen D7, I was like, wow! Like he's thinking like a machine. Exactly, Hikaru played very well. For apart from the games with Vidit, the games with Vidit were disaster. But somehow this is okay. It was. Uh, it happened, yeah, somehow. Uh, but Hikaru shown very high level. Nepo, of course, uh, very shaky. Yes, Nepo because looks Nepo, the most shaky, you know, in this event. Very and shaky. Still, he's at the lead. Like, what? How is okay, it? Okay, that game with Virit was, I mean, it was out of his... He was totally tilted in, the, that, in that game. Yeah, you could see. Like, afterwards, he was at press conference. He was showing variations. And at some point, he just said, yeah, I was just tilted. He just was just making moves. And he's a very good player, amazing player. Everything is right. A great... By the way, his fighting spirit is amazing. Like... That game, it started to go wrong. At one point, he could uh, play safe. He just kept pushing for a win, yeah? While being a leader already. Mm. That decision to me was very, very uh, um, not obvious. But I thought Vidit was pushing, no, for a win? Like, he didn't repeat. No, Nepo was pushing. Vidit, of course, was pushing. But Nepo also was pushing for a win. He was playing for a win the entire time. Ah, entire time, you think? Yes. He was playing for a win the entire time. It's clear from his play. He just didn't look back. From the opening, he got advantage. Then the things were getting out of control. He was just kept playing for a win without looking back. Even when Vidit was repeating moves in a better position for a move, then Nepo said, uh, fortunately, he didn't repeat again. I don't know if you watched the press conference. Yeah, yeah. He was going to, he wanted to win the whole time. Uh, so Nepo's got the spirit, you know. He's got the skill, but of course, uh, also he's tiredness. emotional, nervous. He looks a little tired yeah. also. Yes, of course, of course. But there is a rest day, though. Hmm. Uh, white with Hikaru, yeah, it's nice, but the last and okay, last game is hard. Black with Fabi, who is in must win last round, hard. Nepo hard. has the toughest pairing, no? He has Hikaru yeah, and Fabi. For sure. And uh, yeah. also, uh, Hik- Hikaru has kind of Nepo and Gukesh. Fabi has Prag and Nepo. Uh, no, the, you know, the easiest pairing by far is Gukesh, yes. but I think Gukesh is. Uh, the biggest underdog in a tiebreak. You mean? Do you he... agree here? Mm, got it. I think he wants tiebreak the least, and he should want it the least. Do you agree? I think he's uh, he has no such track record in rapid. He has some good rapid. I, I remember course, in WR Masters, if you remember, yes, there was he, a rapid yes, playoff with, well. uh, with Levon, Nepo, and yes. Gukesh. And actually, yes. Gukesh beat Nepo there one game. Yes, he did beat Nepo, but he did lose to Levon. He, he lost to Levon. Yes. He also uh, in the Tata Steel uh, tiebreak yes. in Blitz. Yes. He lost to me first game. Then he beat me yes. in the next two games. But then he lost to Bei. Yes. So in tiebreaks, he does okay, but he has it to one one. Mm-hmm. Hikaru, I mean Hikaru, of course, tiebreak is his. Uh... But, but tell me, Hikaru losing to Prague in rapid playoffs in World Cup was a big surprise to me, which showed that he is he can be. You know, fallible like uh, in in. Uh, of course, but that that game, of course, was uh, mostly uh, he lost a piece in the opening. Yeah, yeah it was some sort of an opening disaster. I mean, of course, I mean anyone can lose. I'm just saying that let's say if Gukesh plays Hikaru in tiebreak, let's just say, um, I give Gukesh thirty five. Let's say one in three, he will win. Maybe one in three, thirty five percent chance more or less, which is fine. But he's an underdog, right? Then. Um, this is more or less how I see the situation between uh, Gukesh and Hikaru in Thai. Just, just given the the track record, you know, World Rapid and Blitz, Gukesh uh, hasn't been doing as well as Hikaru. Um, 
you know, the, everything, this this whole title Tuesday business, Champions Chess Tour. Gukesh had some good Champions Chess Tours, of course, but Hikaru, of course, has insane yeah. track record. Yeah. Hikaru has, and Nepo is also good Rapid and Blitz. Um, Fabi is okay also. I mean, from all these four people, I think Gukesh is the, not by far, of course, but very slightly an underdog. So he wants a tiebreak blitz, but he has the easiest pairing because I think he has white against Alireza. And I think that last round game with Hikaru, in very likely that game, Hikaru will not go after him. You understand? He might get a, he might get an easy ride there. This is a nice thing. This, this is, is what such I an exciting analysis, uh, Anish. I feel uh, very thrilled uh, that what will happen and also the fact that anyone can win this tournament makes it so exciting. Uh, and, and if you had to choose your favorite, is there anyone you would put your money on at this point? Ah, you mean so who I want or who I think will is most likely? Both. Uh, I mean, are they the same or they are different for you? Uh, let me remind, remind myself because on my uh, Twitter account I pl I posted today uh, my deep analysis. I'm doing uh, I have a um, uh, I'm doing deep analysis where I'm uh, giving. Oh yeah, I put Gukesh as thirty three percent chance, Nakamura twenty seven percent chance, Nepo twenty five percent, Fabi fifteen. I think Gukesh is the favorite. I explained to you that he has the easiest pairing. Yeah. Um, the way things are going, I mean, Alireza is a tremendous player, but he is in uh, such a such a shaky form. If you see uh, his games closely, he creates a mess, of course. No, but that's the problem. Like, he invites a mess, and then he's he was not able to handle that mess. How many times he miscalculated um, as compared to his opponents? Like, you have to see the games. Mm. So many miscalculations. Mostly because positions are difficult, but he is creating them himself, you know? So he will do the, again the same thing, I guess. He will again create a mess. And will uh, again very likely uh, miscalculate something, but he he did beat Gukesh in the previous uh, yes. previous half. Yes. Yes. But uh, I do expect that uh, in round thirteen, Nepo Hikaru most likely draw, Prague Fabi most likely draw, Gukesh Alireza. Of course, Gukesh is the most likely player to win from all the three leaders. So that's why I give Gukesh better chances uh, because of the game against uh, because of the round thirteen. If we were in, if all the games end in round thirteen, we'll go to round fourteen. Then situation changes. Then Hikaru becomes a favorite for me, because the game Hikaru Gukesh, I think more likely Hikaru will uh, win than lose, but probably draw. And then in tiebreak, I take Hikaru over Gukesh. Uh, while uh, Fabi against Nepo, with all due respect, uh, doesn't matter actually. Whoever wins that game, I mean Fabi, if Fabi wins or draw, he only get, reaches the tiebreak. So Hikaru still is the favorite. But with round thirteen still left to play, uh, Gukesh is my favorite right now, given this game with Adresa. Thank you, Anish, for this very detailed analysis. Uh, Anish, we wanted to also ask you a few questions which our uh, viewers had sent in. Should I pull that up? For sure, for sure. So, uh, this was related to your and our, actually, it's our course that we made. It is the Super Grandmaster's Guide to Openings, Volume 1, E4, Volume 2, D4. And basically, it's two volumes. Before you came, I showed people uh, how it is. And uh, I can also uh, basically show you this is how it looks. So, this is Volume 2. Um, just a second here. Yeah, so this is volume one. We had done this Rui Lopez, Italian game, Petrov, Scotch. So it's basically an entire primer for openings. Uh, so what I was saying is you get to know the entire terrain of openings through this. Maybe you have some other uh, things to add about this course that you have created. Well, you know, Sagar, I've created uh, multiple chessable courses, uh, which are extremely good, uh, extremely good. But uh, I've received, because, you know, I put uh, work into this, you know. I mean, not to disrespect anyone or anything or other courses. They're all good on chess. They have high standards, very high. But I still, um, I've come across different courses, you know. Uh, so I see sometimes, because I can see, yeah, from the, uh, from the course, uh, how much uh, time people put, um, what kind of analysis do they give? Is it something recent? Is it old? Sometimes I see, I saw one course, for example, opening course. I go through it. I understand. How did the person make it? Like, uh, why are these recommendations? Then I realized, aha, uh -huh, probably it's some old engine 
And then he just used the same uh, analysis without rechecking and just uh, pack repackaged it and sold. Uh, I don't like like this. So I put, you know, I check my, uh, I make for the course, you know, with the latest computers. I um, think, you know, before I write every sentence, uh, describing, explaining what it is, I never write some sentence, you know, what we want, what the plans are uh, without making sure it's correct, you know? Uh, or without making sure that this is what I really think. So if I'm I'm about to type like, and white wants to push G5, then I think like, does white really wants to push G5? So then if I stop typing, I start moving a bit the position and I see, ah, he really wants to push. Or I see, oh no, no, he only wants to push G5 if black goes short castle. And I say, okay, white wants to push G5 and play case black short castles. You know what I'm So I want that everything that I write, all of these automatical things that you think I just write like this, that they are all um, make sense. So I really try to understand the, these positions because that also helps me. Yeah? Then I really understand. So uh, I really put my uh, soul into my chessable courses. But, and uh, fortunately, I get good reviews. Some of the uh, negative feedback, uh, one stuff is that there are some people who say that, you know, or oh, a lot of the positions, for example, in black repertoires, uh, sometimes, you know, you get position without winning chances or something. But, you know, it's people who uh, don't understand that, like in... Uh, high level chess uh you sometimes best play by white makes you have to defend yeah if you want that you are better with black everywhere and have attack everywhere then you have to lie to yourself somewhere you can do that kind of course i can do that i can make a course where we are crushing everywhere but then i'll get feedback okay this there you didn't check computer move here you didn't check this move Com here the computer says white is much better here uh, with this move so what's like then i'll get this kind of i don't want this kind of feedback yeah i want to give the so sometimes you have these positions. So this is the one type of feedback I get, which is completely really fine. And uh, the other what I get is often people are asking me like, uh, but you know, like, uh, or they say, yeah, this got great courses, but uh, I'm noob, you know, I'm noob. Uh, for me to study neither of 24 hours, 24 hour course, my neither of course, my best, uh, best selling, uh, best reviewed course, everybody's happy. But they say, okay, for me, there's neither 24 hours, all these too deep variations, my opponents don't even reach it. Uh, I'm noob, you know. I'm noob. And also people say, many people say, I'm broke. They say, you know, I'm broke. I'm student. I have no money for this. Your course, uh, I don't know, $40, whatever. With video, your course is, uh, uh, some, I don't even know what it is, 100. I don't know what it is, that, honestly. I forgot. The, but something like 100 or some more, I don't even know. Maybe more without discount. They do discount still expensive. They say, you know, I'm noob and I'm broke. That's all that they say. <laughs> okay. And I understand. I understand. I understand. We are all, um, relatively speaking, all noobs and broke. Uh, so now we finally have a course for people that are uh, noobs and I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> this was not the promotion I was looking at, but but it's the it's the honest honest uh, promotion that that AG is doing. <laughs> no, no, but on serious note, yeah, on serious note. So this course, no, um, this is serious, yeah, what you are saying. This no, no, but on serious note, okay. um, basically those yeah. who are not broke can also get it, right? Well, <laughs> they and you know the the rich will stay rich, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, of course. Um, I think you from the. What I saw, the promotion you give uh, and everything, the price is very uh, friendly on Chessbase India. Um, what is the price? Do you, do, you, do you know the price from uh, the top of your head? It is uh, 1999 for both volumes uh, plus Rupees, yeah. GST. Yes. It comes to around 27 or $28, I think. Both volumes, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, so it's a. Uh, that's one thing. And the other thing, more important, because, okay, people, they can, of course, sometimes, you know, you don't buy coffee for two days, you save this money. Yeah? Uh, what you uh, what you get, of course, is uh, something where the entry level is much uh, much more accessible. Yeah, You don't have to be an experienced player. You can be new to the game completely. And if you are interested in the chess openings, then it's for you, basically. You just have to be a little bit interested about chess openings. And I know many people, like, mess, for me, like, chess openings was the most fascinating part uh, of, of the game. And I know many beginners, right from the start, they just begin chess. And immediately there, they want to know what is this opening, what openings, how openings, why, what's called the Greenfield, what's called this, why is this, uh, can I play Greenfield against E4, can I play against D4, what is the point, what are the ideas, like, how is it exactly? When is it called Greenfield? Is one knight of six? Or my son also asked me like he says he says this Dutch defense. Is it like 
uh, f4 dodge defense. No, no, I said dodge defense with black. If you if they play d4, then you go f5. Ah, okay, okay. So only and I said, yeah, can you play against e4? No, you can't play against e4 dodge defense <laughs> because then you are. Uh, you understand? So um, people want to know this stuff, and uh, yeah, here we are trying to we try to make a course. Mm -hmm where uh, we explain all the openings uh, we show uh, you know show the basics the ideas how many hours is in total sagar i, I uh, forgot what exactly it, it the is, came out first to? one is three and a half second is also somewhere that so total around seven seven hours and few minutes yes that's uh very big uh, even bigger than we had anticipated i was thinking it's going to be a couple hours but finally we we're talking you know sagar here and time flew by mm -hmm. openings there also there are so many openings in chess Finally, we covered um, seven hours. Uh, so split into two parts. Sir, how would you describe this uh, course? What is it about? So so here, this is what I have already, like people can see. This I just downloaded today because it got released yesterday. Mm -hmm. I also sent you the link. You can download it. It's basically all the openings for one E4 put here in the first volume. And whenever you click on an opening, not only do you get this video. So like when you click here, you can see the video. By the way, I have to still put in the serial key. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, Wait, did you both Anish, buy it or to... you have in the no, medical no, no, copy? So everyone <laughs> yeah. gets the setup file and key. So I just uh -huh. downloaded this for the stream. And now I have to put the key in, which everyone gets who buys it. Yeah, yeah nice, so, nice. Uh, this is where you can see the video. And then what we did is we also put made this analysis uh, thing. So let's say if you nice. are Rui Lopez, so you have a database here where there is something written about uh, about Rui Lopez. And by the way, this is not by Anish. This is done by uh, me and one of my friends here. So you get a very basic lines of Rui Lopez. What are they? Uh, and then there are games which are, let's say, Anish's game against Magnus. There is MVL, Anish. You know, all openings uh, of Rui Lopez, we have given one game with annotations on in the database so then people can you know get some direction some idea like that yeah yeah it's nice because uh, we just did the video with you sagar right yes we referred and we looked at one of my games for each uh, for yes. each uh, topic uh, then it's very nice that you uh, added to this that all the games and the, what we discussed in video that you also put it into the text format that's very nice yes and um, this way I, there yeah. is everything and by the way there is one small feature here which is called repertoire training if you click here you will get this entire thing online and then you can drill. So this is also very interesting. Like it says, please enter a move for white. So it will remind you it's like kind of playing against uh, that repertoire. Uh, drill, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like no, that. No, it's funny because, uh, yeah, yeah. A bit like uh, trying something a little bit like chessable. I see. Well, yeah. Yes, I think so. Maybe similar, but uh, this was done way back. Like this feature is there on Chessbase since many, many years. But I, maybe it was inspired by that. I'm not sure. I don't know who was first, but it's very logical. Yeah, like that you are testing. Uh, I mean, that you are practicing. It's not like anyway, whoever was first. It's uh, like Duolingo. Yeah, basically, you are just uh, practicing what you learned. Normal, normal. Very, very good. And this uh, is the D4 course. QGA, Semislav, Queen's Gambit, Nimzo Indian, Grunfeld, King's Indian, Benko, Benoni, and so on. Uh, sir, one question to you. Uh, is it like a honest question? I don't even know myself. Is it... Uh, so you buy, you get an online... Uh, you get download kind of link type thing. To, uh, there are two, three ways. So first is you get... Uh, uh, exe file for windows and dmg file for a mac and the serial key so that works directly you don't need any software anything you just install uh -huh. it and make it work right nice. uh, you can open it on chessbase that gives you more features if you have a chessbase software but in case if you uh -huh. have a mobile phone and if you have a, a tablet you still have the serial key which you get so you go to videos.chessbase.com like from there and you can also access it from there. So you can also stream it. So it's basically available on all platforms. Uh, and one other question for fun. Um, back in the day, that used to be like DVDs. Is it also on DVD is no longer done, yeah? Chessbase uh, in Germany, they, they send it. So people have, they have a very uh, regular followers who like it still in that format. So they make a few, but of course the downloads have much more sales than the actual, but they make it. DVDs. I have but it exists. This, this circular, uh, you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they make it still. 
And this big one, this uh, phenyl, you know, this black one, this one, <laughs> like the Beatles records. Do they do that? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> so that is not available. <laughs> okay, no, very nice, sir. Okay, uh, I think we did some good promotion. Um, yeah. So if you are a noob and you want a course, this is for you, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and broke. <laughs> Forgot. I'm broke. Yeah. So uh, we what we had said is all those who would buy it in pre-order because we started selling from 14th of April to 18th of April. There were four days, and all those who bought in that got a chance to ask you a question. And there were around 10 to 12 people who sent in their questions. Can we very quickly you can yes. answer them? Is it, is it Let's possible? Let's answer the questions. Okay. Let's go. So here is the Q and A session. I want to give a shout out to Vidhi in our team who has worked mm -hmm. on these questions, sent mails to all the people. So first one, uh, Ishan says, I've been stuck at 1200 for a year, haven't learned or studied anything yet. I want to improve my chess skills. Will this course help me as well? Okay, it's a difficult question. Let me think. Hmm. <laughs> You've been stuck for it. So you are a noob. Mm -hmm. That's good. Doesn't talk about his financial uh, thing. Probably yet. also broke. <laughs> no, but that's you don't you don't have to be broke. <laughs> no, no. But it's uh, you are a noob. Uh, definitely. 1200 is uh, difficult uh, to progress because there's the level where you stop blundering already, the obvious things. Uh, but you still need uh, to improve a lot. Uh, this course, um, it will be very useful for you. You get an overview of the chess openings, and then you can uh, decide what opening you want to pursue. I think once you do that at the level of 1200, which is already quite decent, you do want probably to delve deeper into that topic that you've chosen. Yeah, Let's say um, you want to study the, the Karokan, for example. Yeah. You've decided that based on from what you saw that okay, Karakan is for you. Then you want to get some sort of Karakan course, you know, uh, probably. Mm. So I don't think that this course honestly will improve your rating directly. It will, of course, uh, make you understand the openings better because we keep talking all the time, Sagar. We keep talking about chess openings fundamentally, right? You like, know, what are know, the goals? Anish, I also learned a few things, in, like, I'm a pretty decent player, but when I asked a certain question, you would often describe it at your understanding. So in that sense, I un I took away a few things from your over, like your approach is not like a very beginner related. You are go doing it for noobs, but you have the entire picture of having of played it at the highest level. Of course, of course. Uh, no, you learn a lot. I'm just thinking if I say that you get higher rating and uh, Ishan won't, will he ask for refund or not? <laughs> Because let's I don't try, expect that you buy this, this course. Ishan. It's not like it's not really like uh, buy the course and get a 200 elo point boost. I don't think that's uh, you will understand the openings more fundamentally. It will ignite love for that part of the game. Um, it will help you choose opening repertoire, but I don't think uh, it will make you unstuck from 1200. Let me put it this way, <laughs> by itself. Uh, but I think it will be very helpful for sure, for sure. But it's yeah, I, I think to get unstuck from 1200. Well, a lot of things uh, need to be uh, need to be done for sure. Like also at that level, uh, I mean, tactics, tactics, tactics. Yeah, also very important. Okay, fantastic. Thank you for that answer. Our faces are cutting the next question, but I'll read it out. Are both the opening courses good for kids, advanced beginner players? Are there more tactical ideas or positional lines in this opening course? Shailesh Israni asks. Yeah, I think it's good. I mean, I don't think the age. We only said that it's uh, that you have to be noob and broke. It doesn't matter, child or or adult. That's, that I don't think it matters. <laughs> no, okay. Jokes aside, um, we talk about ideas in the opening. Uh, in, I mean, most of these ideas are positional, in fact. Uh, but of course, when there is a some kind of obvious tactical trap, we mention it. But it's mostly you get understanding of the opening. Um, and yes, it is not like uh, when if you want to work on your tactics, you have to solve tactical exercises, which is a separate thing. There are tactics trainers online. There are tactical books and stuff. So I would say, yes, uh, if you want to decide, then it's more about uh, understanding of the opening and it's more positional. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, there is Satya Narayan who has asked a big question, it seems. Each chess opening has broad strategical idea on which opening moves and the vari variations are built up during a game. Suppose one of the players deviates from main theory in the initial moves. 
and makes a move out of the usual line, then how shall the opponent respond to this over the board? How does the strategy of play response change in such situations? So there are two types of deviations, uh, let's say, yeah? Uh, often a move uh, that the opponent played that you haven't studied is just a bad version of the move that you did study. In that case, you just continue with the plan that you had already prepared and you just get a better version. And that's all. Sometimes a move that opponent plays that has a certain idea and you haven't studied that move before, then it's much more difficult to respond to that. And uh, then it's very hard to do that on, over the board. And uh, even the best players struggle and then you very likely will make a mistake. And then what you do is you come home, you analyze your game, and then you see with uh, your coach or computer, you see uh, what you should have done instead. And you come back stronger next time. So yes, uh, I think um, this is what I would say. Okay. Uh, next one is by Fuzzle Molvi. I'm a 2000 rated player on chess.com. I learned from my games while playing and that's it. This is the first course that I'm buying. Can you tell me how should I approach learning it so that it can be of best use to me and everyone else who would learn from it? I think uh, just watch uh, the videos in the chronological order. Yeah, so from start to finish. From start to finish. Just watch all the videos. Um, I think that's the as simple as, as that. I, I think it's a complete sort of course. So I, I wouldn't pick out things. It's not too long. I mean, my night of chessable course is 24 hours. Um, but seven hours, yeah. I mean, uh, space also, it out. It, how how much time you have? So many different things, right? In those seven hours. Like you. We yes, yes. No, but I, th I think I, I would just, uh, you know, since I mostly contributed to the, to the video, I would just watch uh, the videos. Yeah. And then if you have more interest in one of the openings, you start with the material that you have um, prepared by, by us, mostly Sagar. Uh, and once you do that, if you feel you want to get more in depth, then you look for an appropriate course on that particular topic, yeah, further on. Uh, but I would I would start by just, yeah, just uh, watch the videos. It's luckily not so long, so seven hours, yeah, you can, you can do it. If you do one hour a day, in one week, you're done. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Sanket says, I have difficulty understanding when and where to pawn break. How to decide that? Okay, it's a very... Uh, yeah, we talk, about, uh, we talk about pawn structures, uh, typical pawn structures in some of these positions. Uh, but when to do the pawn break, that's uh, something you don't know. Uh, you then, you never, you'll never learn. Yeah, these are the most hardest things. Usually what you learn when you talk about some pawn structure, you say, okay, this is a structure, the way the pawns are positioned. One side wants to do this pawn break. Let's say King's Indian, yeah? Black wants to push pawns on the king side. White wants to push on the queen side. Um, that's all. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, the details, uh, what and how, if it was so simple, you know, the Gukeshes and the uh, Prags and Hikaru's, wouldn't be playing, uh, you know, uh, chess for uh, this high level for so long, and uh, they wouldn't be losing games uh, and so on. Because chess is very complicated, so the the details are hard. But at least with the course, you learn what are the typical ideas and what are the pawn breaks, what are the structures. And I think this is the basics. You start with the basics, and when to do the pawn break and how. That's already too ambitious. You'll do that after. This is not for noobs and not for broke people. So this is afterwards. Okay, Jaswik says. How important do you think good opening knowledge is up to 2000 ELO FIDE? When does it start becoming crucial to properly learn the key ideas or even subtler intricacies? Can I wing it by just knowing the surface to a certain level? Sir, so, sir, sir, I'm a little bit uh, bad when I have the visual and the audio and I don't see the... Can you repeat again what... Uh, yeah, this from one, start? how yeah. important... Oh, maybe you can move us, yeah. Think... Finish up until... So... Um... The opening basics are vital. I think at the very start as well, the basics are vital. And that is for sure covered in the course. I think we have a chapter at the start, yeah? Yes, fundamentals. Just... I was fundamentals. actually very, very surprised when you started talking about it. But then I started to think, uh, and then you also spoke about how Chess 960 has sort of evolved a little bit of your understanding right now because Weizenhaus happened and so on. It was very interesting. No, but I chapter. think this epic chapter, I think this fundamentals, I would recommend even to other top players to watch i think uh, um this is the chapter that's very dear to me and uh i really put a lot of thought in it yeah, and you were very very excited for that one yes. chapter i remember yes i think this is the highlight of the course i think um 
chess is uh, there are lots of cliches you know about chess that okay you know the develop pieces is that uh, a lot of basic rules but some of it is also very true but some of it is uh, not so obvious and uh, yeah fundamentals is exciting for example the basic just to give you a little uh, taste yeah of what it is like for example very often why you castle? Everybody says castle, you know, the, the thing where you move the king to the side and rook come, jumps over, yeah? Why do people castle? They usually say to bring king to safety, yeah? Bring king to safety. But so often you castle, in fact, to connect the rooks, not to bring king to safety. So often. And this is such an important realization because then you know when the h file is already open for the rook, so often, or the other rook is already gone, you don't need to castle. You just go king f1, king g1, keep the rook on the h file. Or you don't even castle. Like, Many people, they assume that castling is to secure the safety of the king, but it is not at all a given. It is very often to bring the h1 rook into play. Very, very often. So uh, these kind of uh, things, you know, fundamentals, the um, why we don't play knight h3. Remember, this is, a, this is the realization I had re recently. Don't play knight h3 because knight because is better of, in the center, because they the say. Way in no, which this the is not at all. Are because the bishop on c8. Yes. Not if. Yes. Not Sagar, because... don't get those two seconds. It's for, it's for, it's on the course. Don't reveal. <laughs> don't tell them. No, this was also a big thing for me because whenever we are teaching chess, we have been yes, so we say, accustomed to, to the center. the same things. Yeah. But we say the... put knight on h3 because it's to the center. Yeah. Then suddenly Carlson plays chess 960, pulls knight h3, and is winning easily, you know, uh, against Feruza. And everybody is asking what happened. Yes. Yeah, that, yeah, was, yeah. that was a very, very big revelation. Fundamentals there. is a, is a crucial chapter of the course. For me, this is like the, the key chapter of the course. And uh, this is good for players of all levels from start to, to finish. Okay. There are five more questions. So maybe we need to speed up a bit because then mm -hmm. uh, there's a guest yeah. joining in. Pritam Banerjee and Harman Nam says, what is the best way to remember multiple openings? Is there a long-term goal associated with each opening that should be kept in mind? Can you make a tier list of different openings based on most attacking to most defensive? Oh, this is an interesting stream idea at some yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But uh, we, basically, we basically did that with a course, not in that way, but in a more... Like, this is uh, how you would imagine it would work if you are a complete noob in chess. You cannot make a tier list like that because you know but but basically with the course we tried to do as something as close to this as possible as realistic as possible uh, and the best way to remember is well the, the only way to try and remember is to uh, understand as many patterns as possible and the more patterns you understand the more the more bridges you have in in your mind to connect things to each other that you can remember for example when i'm trying to remember a position blindfold if i just see it right away it's harder to remember than if I had calculated it for uh, uh, five minutes. And if I calculate the position for half an hour, I remember it so firmly in my head. It sits in my head because I have built all these different connections, all these different patterns, all the different pieces and moves. After half an hour of calculating, I, my position, the position sits very firm in my head. And that's also how you remember best. Got it. Okay. Uh, the next question is by Suhas who says, which openings would you focus on for quick growth? And is there a structured method of learning you would follow? Yeah, there in chess, there is no this uh, get rich quick scheme. Um, that's why chess is a beautiful game. Uh, but uh, how to choose the opening, uh, which opening to choose? Uh, you know, the the short answer is a seven hour answer of, in the course, right? This is basically the, the shortest we could do. And um, so you yeah, watch this is, it, uh, Anish, you watch, they should watch it. And then the answer will come from within that this I feel more connect, like this opening feels much more like what I can play and so on. Yeah, exactly. Because again, this this just simply like saying what is the best opening for quick growth or what is the most attacking opening. It's not how it is. You know, they are looking for an answer that is very easy, but chess is more complex than that. There cannot be such an easy answer. Okay. Mayur Gondhadekar, oh, he's also in the chat. He says for openings not covered in the course, one knight f3, one knight c3, one b3, one g3. It's covered. It's, it's actually it's covered. covered. Will there be a separate explanation video? If not, should we base our... Uh, it is there, Mayur. We have covered it. Uh, Which one... where, by the way, because the one is e4, one is d4. Yeah, you said. No, in d4, it's not just d4. It's one d4 plus one ah. c4 plus knight f3. Yeah, yeah. So that's no. We covered one. everything. We covered everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Revant Kumar says 
you won your first and only title tuesday while third. this course not was first. it was not first it was the third title tuesday really number 3 yes oh i thought it was your first victory there no no first victory yes ah okay 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 i thought he said that i won my like the first title tuesday i won was the first one i played i misunderstood sorry sorry you are right I didn't get it. Like, wasn't that? No, no. I misunderstood the question. You, you are right. Yes, it says you won your first title, but I thought he means you won your first title Tuesday. But he means you won the first title Tuesday while the like I mis I misunderstood the question. While Continue. this course was in recording phase, so what gave you the extra boost? The making of this course or Sagar Bhai? Oh, this is. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, good energy. I think good energy. <laughs> I spent uh, all my good vibes. Uh, yes, good vibes and uh, my nervous energy. My nervous system was peak performance in that in that stream. But then after my next tournament after that was a disaster. I used up all my uh, nervous energy in the title Tuesday and then in China I played very bad. But yeah, in title Tuesday sorry, that time Anish, I... I've never apologized to you for your Shenzhen performance and maybe I had to do something related to it. So sorry for that. Uh, Taimur Sarfaraz says, since people are trying new things in chess, what's your thought about a tournament just on openings where you have to make opponents commit the worst wrong move as compared to the engine in first 10-15 moves? I want to I want to add something here, Anish. In in May in Morocco, there is going to be an event where oh, yeah, I know. four players are going to play and they're going to start with some position that is a famous position of some classical game classic game in the past you know epic they invited me to that tournament you didn't you're not they invited me to that tournament okay uh, and then afterwards they said no no no, sorry Carlson actually agreed so you, you don't have to come <laughs> can you believe it <laughs> oh, they agreed you know they offered me condition everything i agreed yeah so sure um and then they said, yeah, yeah, no, no. They said, uh, sorry, we we didn't, uh, Carlson actually wants to play, so. Just, it would have uh, been epic can, can to skip. have you, because the tournament is Magnus, uh, Vichy, Nakamura, Ikaro. and yeah. uh, Basem, who is the yes. uh, re I mean, local Basem, yes. representative from Africa. Yes, yes. So. Yeah, 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 no, I think Carlson didn't want to play first, uh, but then afterwards they changed his mind and they're like, okay, no, we have to kick out then the guy. <laughs> Such noob, seriously. Yeah, no, they need my course for sure. But um, <laughs> no, good tournament. Uh, you, you the one where they do some. Uh, I mean, money was not so good, but I guess he, Carlson gets more. Yeah, so I guess the sponsor has to put up more money now because I hope he gets more than what I was <laughs> offered. Crazy. Because it's not nothing amazing. <laughs> She's going on a different tangent now about that event. <laughs> yeah. But this Taimur Sarfaraz question is kind of similar to that event. What he's yeah, asking. yeah, like there were some tournaments like with themes, yeah, like you can only play King's Gambit or something like this. But it's um, it's more fun uh, the way it is now because you can play any opening, not only one. Okay. Cool. Okay, that covers all the questions. Thank you, Anish, for that. Uh, and guys, you can check out all the links that are there in description, volume one separately, volume two, both together are the first, is the first link. And also if you are not from, uh, you know, chess-based software, chess-based India only services to certain areas. So if you are not from that, you can go and get it from chessbase.com. That link also is there in the description. You can check it out. And uh, Anish, thank you for making this. There is something that you have to do now, mm -hmm. uh, which are... Uh, viewers are not aware of so maybe we can do that you are going to play a blitz game against a very famous personality guys anish mm -hmm. is going to play a blitz game against a very very famous guy uh any guesses while uh, anish is kind of finding out things sneha says sagar there is a question here from a parent how can a 1700 rated 13 year old improve further well if the 13 year old is 1700 fide he is already very very strong he or she and i think it requires very careful investigation there as to what their level is how what are the mistakes they are making and i wouldn't very lightly say it because to be 1700 fide at this uh, young age is already something something special so uh, i don't want to lightly say oh work on something and that so maybe better is to send in your games perhaps 
a uh, few games at chessbaseindia at gmail.com i uh, every now and then check out a few games and suggest some things oh wow you do personal coaching via chessbase india email yeah i just uh, there are people who send in their games i look at them and then i can get a better idea than just answering it doesn't i don't go like too deep but i take like 10 minutes see the games and i get a better understanding it's like this doctor chess nice 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 you have time for that as well yes yeah, sagar by the way you are sleeping yeah sometimes i hope because i saw this reel it looks very worrying <laughs> yesterday i was on live stream with amruta and i was sleeping in it so amruta said please go away so i just clicked on leave meeting on zoom and i just dozed off there and then all the photographers kind of came clicked one photo video everything they all enjoyed and then when i woke up they all were showing me look you are sleeping look you are sleeping <laughs> there is evidence of just sleeping at some point but because also guys sagar he scheduled the stream for the wrong day because i think for him it's all one long day the whole tournament he doesn't know 20 19 18 like it's one long I long no day i have no clue i just go i cover i come back i do this i go and i don't know last time when i ate food like uh lunch dinner for example so it's like this there is some going... alu parata right some video with alu parata i <laughs> alu heard parata was there. <laughs> yeah yeah we are doing a first ever meetup in uh, in uh, canada chess mm -hmm. meetup so yeah it's nice by the way uh, so should i go to chess.com uh i don't know where's my challenger uh, he's there you have to challenge him he won't oh, I have come to him okay okay i have to challenge him i'll challenge him he will come after the after the games are done that's what he had okay. mentioned okay By the way, guys, uh, for this stream, because we have less time, I couldn't do one thing which I had prepared. But later on, maybe someday we will try it out with Anish. It was this thing. Uh, no, wait, where is it? Mm. One second. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> yeah, this is the one. So, Anish, what I did was I went through all the games and I kind of found the critical moment of opening where new ideas were played in the candidates Oof. and i wanted yeah, to get your thoughts on uh, this each so there were some very nice uh, new like with it c6 against nakamura mm. and all but someday mm. we can we can think of it yeah uh, you will have to challenge him i guess on do you see a challenge from me he says Ah, do I see challenge? Yeah. Guys. No, it's outgoing. Anish is going to play against the one and only. The biggest YouTuber in the world of chess. And it's going to be an epic game. I think one game, right, Anish? Yeah, but I'm not sure it's going to work. Uh, <laughs> 10 minutes. Let's see. I'm... Yeah, I sent. I don't see challenge. Levi, come on, you need to make it work. Let's see, let's see. Oh, wait, you're froze probably. Wait, wait, wait. I'm frozen. No, but I know this, I'm noob. I I, I know already. I have to not minimize you. Uh, wait. Yeah, now it's good. You're good, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Did you did you get this challenge? Let me see. No, I only have one going one. So guys, uh, Levi is uh, going to play against Anish right now, and he's actually recording it offline because he is uh, doing uh, something related to a product which he has with him, and that we will get to see maybe later on at some point. Um, that video, I think Levi will release it on his channel. So what I am going to do is I'm going to uh, follow the game of Anish and when it starts and then we can see and Anish might also give his insights on how he will play. Meanwhile, I will send the link also to, uh, I have sent it to a few people. Uh, I don't know if they will join, but.
Ah, okay. One second, I have a message from one of the guests whom I had invited. So I should, it's a voice message. No, I don't think I have the, I don't see the challenges. Where do I see? They should come up here, right? Somewhere. Let's see. Okay, got it. Well, it's daily now. Guys, the the challenge part Wrong is tab. a little okay. complicated, but once the game starts, it will be fun. Okay, then chess.com slash play slash online. Okay, now I'm there. It will be under. Which under? On on bottom right, it comes, Anish. Yeah, yeah, it should. And you are playing with which ID? Anish Giri on YouTube or something? Anish on YouTube? Yeah, Anish on YouTube, I'm here. I think his challenge is not working, right? But uh, you can just challenge him, no, on his username. Is it not possible? I think he needs to issue the challenge. Ah, okay. Levi, come on. You know all this technical stuff. Anish is not so good at technic technology, so... You I'm a bit to... boomer, yeah. <laughs> you have to get it working. But the boomer stuff works best in my channel. Remember, whenever we have boomer issues here, the viewership just goes up. Yes, it's happening today. <laughs> when you are not talking, is it happening? Like we spoke yeah, about yeah. candidates, scores, everything, and the viewership keeps dropping. And then you are sitting there doing nothing, adjusting OBS. And then it goes rising. Like, what is Anish going to talk? Yeah, I'm now looking at my friends and I'm wondering what are my friends. I have like Gotham Sagar Raina. I am. I don't know who that is. Alessandra Bottas, Vidiches, and then some three people with the. I don't know who are these people. <laughs> Why Sagar right now? Who is that? This I am. Is me, Sagar, because in one of the streams, I Amruta had to beat Samai. If not, my name was going to be changed from Sagar Shah to Sagar Raina. So it's me. But what happened to your rating, Sagar? No, I don't. Sagar, you can meanwhile uh, show me some position. Let's do the positions. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, let's do it. Wow. I want to, I actually, I wanted to ask about this one. So, uh, let's go. So, Anish, this is the one which was my question to you. It is very fresh from the oven because it happened just yesterday. And this was the game between Guki and Abasov. H6 move. It's not a novelty. It has been played before. What are your thoughts on this move? Uh, I know this move. You knew it. I knew it. Would you have ever played uh, epic it? Epic move. Would you have ever epic played move? It? So um, the idea is that if White plays e4, yeah, I'll go c5. Um, e5 knight at seven. E5 no 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 no. E5, you would CD think, but no no. E5 CD CD. Yeah. EF DC. Yeah. And uh, no. Yes, let's say BC. Bishop or, I, no, but uh, sorry 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 sorry. Uh, no no sorry. Oh, E5 CD A3. E5 CD A3. Sagar, that's the that's the line. E5 CD A3. Okay. Yes. And uh, with castle, this is a problem. Also interesting. So, so if you are uh, saying that if here there was castles e4, c5, e5, e5 c5, cd, a3, ef, no, not ef, sorry, not ef, directly a3. a3. Yeah. This is a problem. Bishop a5, ef. Yeah. DC, ah, right? wait a second, one second, one second, one second. Uh, so the point is that without castle after h6, I have bishop of eight after a3. <sighs> oh. Oh my God, what a deep point. So here the bishop cannot come back because there's a rook. 
and because h6 is kind of a waiting move in this line takes a3 bishop f8 oh my god oh my god really yes Let me check if I can allow if I have allowed challenges. Allow challenges, everyone. And yeah, no, I think it works. This is so yeah. So this, this one idea. This is why I wanted to do this with you because you can show something which would take like ten hours for someone to understand in like ten seconds. Unbelievable. Uh, but uh, after h six, so knight f three is what he played. Yeah. C five. D C. Knight a6. What I remember is whenever the knight is on f3, this knight takes c5, knight e4 is very good. Yes, so he waited for knight f3 yes. and then, okay, uh, so I knew h6, but honestly, I didn't know the knight takes c3 thing. So uh, knight takes c3, bishop c5, knight h7, this I didn't know. You mean So I assumed one. the idea was to go bishop takes c3, but I didn't know this, knight c3, bc, bishop c5. I mean, I didn't check this so deeply. I knew h6 is just an idea. But knight, knight h7, h7 is insane. Is insane, right? No, but it's like okay, but it's basically it's very, very, very uh, simple logic here. I can tell you. So White wants to play e5 and move the knight yeah. from f3. Yeah. Uh, Black wants to go rook b8 b6, but if Black starts with rook b8 uh, directly, then it's bishop f4. So he just does the move order where he first goes knight h7, then provokes uh, e5. Ah, but then maybe he can go a little bit more useful move, no? Like rook d1, then rook b8. There is bishop f4 still. So but no, but then I can castle. Ah, you still have use. And moves. the moment you go e5, preparing for knight d2 or knight d4, that's when I go rook b8. Oh, got it. So it's just a move order thing, but, but it but, looks epic. But can I not do rook b1 because you don't? But have now I can play b6. Move. Now, now I no, I, now ah, I can play b6. E5 oh, is no longer B6 there. Yeah. Because e5 yeah. is not there. Right, right, right. Got it. Nice. But of course, uh, like, like I knew when he played knight h7. I knew that if I'm going to put on computer now, it will say the black is fine. But uh, of course, it looks insane to go knight h7 in the opening. Yeah. Whoa, nice. Amazing insight there. Wow. This was epic, Anish. Thank you for sharing. Um, wait, let me, till you are fixing the thing with Levy, let me see if I have another interest. Ah, yes, this is my... One of, I would say this is the opening of the, this is the highlight of the event for me somehow. F5 by Prague. What is your feeling about this? Yeah, no, this is uh, very, very risky. I mean, you are showing me all kinds of ideas, Sagar, where we, which we sort of would criticize in our course. <laughs> <laughs> they're, all, they're not for noobs, these ideas. You show me the weird ones, the freaky ideas. This is so dubious I, I'll for tell black. You how it is, you know, Anish. You know what I, Sagar? You know what I'll tell you the yeah, funny thing? How what it compares to? Okay, yes. let's. The best way is d4 ed e5. Yeah. Yes. Make d4 ed e5. Uh, d4 ed e5. Yeah. So you know what this is like? This is like uh, Albin counter gambit. Oh, you know? Yes, it's an epic Albin counter counter gambit. D4. Yeah, just to show d4 d5 c4. E5. Ah, you knew, yeah. Nice. Yeah, d4, knight f3, and c6. When I was actually before, it's... playing, Albin counter gambit was a very big thing because Morozevich was playing it a lot. Yes. And people yes. wanted to try it. And I had to face it many times. No, Moro was a hero. Knight f3, knight c6, g3. Bishop g4. It even is the same. It's even similar, you know? Like, let's say g3, bishop g4. It's even like colors, like, it's like mirrored. Yeah. yeah but yeah. you know, it's insane there because the king is so weak because on the. You have on... pushed your f pawn, not your c pawn. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Crazy. So this was a great... Uh, I think Prague just played it psychologically. Just point more. one critical moment in that game, Sagar. We did, he could make draw with 9 7 at some point. Ah, and yes. he didn't do it. That was, of course, uh, in hindsight, a big mistake. Already things went wrong in the opening. Here. Yeah, 9 7 was forcing a draw here. He saw it. And Queen H5 check. It's just perpetual. Already it went a bit wrong. He could just uh, do the emergency break. But okay, he went all, all out. Yeah. So this one uh, was nice. And uh, Anish, have you made any progress on your game with Levy? Uh, not yet, no. The Levy, because Levy does some high-tech business, but high-tech stuff, of course, it's, uh, I don't know, the, also the challenges on chess.com, it's always for me been, uh, yeah. I don't know, the settings maybe, or... improve it, that thing. Yeah. 
okay this one was also very interesting for me uh, it was not such a big kind of a thing perhaps but it reminded me of ding's match against nepo uh, where he played ah, this... wait 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 Maybe my setting wasn't good. Ah, okay. So uh, finally, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm that... gonna, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get now. I'm gonna get now. <laughs> what are you going to get? Uh, I'm gonna get the challenge now. Ah, okay, got it. Okay, okay. Let's Sneha see one more. Someone here suggested that Anish may have disabled requests from friends. <laughs> <laughs> you have enabled requests from everyone else, but not from friends. That's why my friends are actually my enemies. <laughs> <laughs> my friend list is my enemies. We did Gotham. But actually, some days, like when you gave that interview to Waikanze, where you said, I have very little friends, it, it was very nice. It was funny. But somewhere I did feel very sad there, like when you spoke. Like it, everyone. For felt... all the people who are not my friends, you mean? <laughs> no, just like <laughs> how lonely you are or something on that front. Like I'm you... lonely. You, you mad or what? <laughs> no, no. In that interview, you said. Because I have very few friends, Vidit is one of them. Something like that in Waikanze you had mentioned. Oh. No, don't remember. Was it Waikanze or somewhere else? Ah, yeah, in Waikanze. You said I'm facing Vidit. I don't want to beat beat him or something. I have very few friends. Uh, like no, that. but Sagar, seriously, I have a uh, few friends. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, it's not like um, something you should chase. Quantity kind of thing. It's not like uh, rating. The more, the better. It doesn't work like that. True. That is, I agree. You know, it's an um, it's a mutual thing where two people um, decide that uh, not decide, but where two people, you know, they enrich each other's life. You know, and if the friendship does that to both of them, this is a beautiful thing. But if it doesn't for one of the two, then it's better not to do that, right? It's like sort of like a marriage, except uh, except okay, different a bit. <laughs> You can also have like 100 marriages if you want. And good luck. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> or 100 friends. I mean, not like the more, the better. You know, yeah. Okay. I have 5,000 Facebook between friends. Between you and Samai, when you guys start speaking something that makes sense to me, I feel the punchline is just around the corner. Like I'm like, wow, they are talking what I, I now truly feel this really deeply. And then the punchline. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. So I'm waiting now. Where is the punchline? We did, uh, we did had, uh, <laughs> we did had uh, this interview with Levi, in fact. Mm. And at some point, Levi asked him some innocent question. And suddenly, Vidit starts complaining about that, you know, there is some uh, girl he wants to take out. No, no, it's like, yeah, something like that. And that she sort of, I don't remember, like there was something, Levi asked him something completely different about chess. And Vidit made some analogy like that. Yes, he also wants to, you know, to, he's dreaming of some girl, but she sort of, he knows it won't happen, so he doesn't care, something like this, you know? <laughs> I, have to, I have to watch that interview. You have to watch, yeah, you have to watch. So, suddenly, like, he decided to, yeah, suddenly all basically one -sided topics love came is what to... One-sided love is saying. It was an analogy about one-sided love. One-sided love, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Something like that, though there was no love, or it's just that he had some, yes. By the way, Anish, Basically, yes. I have mm -hmm. a uh, someone who's viewing this is uh, our very good friend and arbiter who has access to chess.com setting up matches. So he said, should I start the match between Levi and Anish? Ah, you let's try. You have to come in live chess. No, no, but it's... You but have it's, to come in live uh, chess. I'm in live chess, but it's uh, on the specific board, yeah? Ah, yeah. He has this uh, board with him, like uh, actual board, and he has to play. I think this uh, board has to, uh, you have to issue the challenge through the board probably to get it, ah, I okay. guess. Yeah, someone you like, but she doesn't like you. That was the thing. Yes, yes. No, I'm, ju I'm just teasing, uh, basically teasing Levi's interview with Vidit. That's what I'm doing. I'm yeah. just pumping, artificially pumping Levi's uh, views. He will see today his spike on his like usual YouTube graph. <laughs> and suddenly today is like, <laughs> suddenly like, what happened? Oh, AG has advertised his, uh, his video. Oh, by the way, Anish, are you surprised? Mm -hmm. And this is my one question. Are you surprised that in this tournament, 
for a win people are playing exchange french what is wrong with people or am i am i stupid well i can tell you why hikaru and nepo plays plays so uh after 1 e4 e5 93 knight of 6 in the petrov yes they have no idea so what to play so they prepared knight e5 d6 knight of 3 knight e4 d3 knight of 6 d4 uh, d5 Correct. bishop d3 yes bishop d3 yeah so they have some they've looked at this position because they have they don't know what else to play against petrov and okay they whatever they they studied it in great detail they want to play it then they were like oh i was spending whole month on petrov there is also french what to do and their second is like but we have great idea in french you can go ed ed and you get the same position now if you have six bishop d3 bishop d6 same position so that's basically the explanation they have no time left for French. That's they wasted all the time on Petrov. They found no ideas in either. But now they can play the same thing against both. Or I was thinking they saw through knight d2 line, knight c3 line in the French. And then they are saying, no, the exchange French has better opportunities. I mean, that would be insane. Uh, well, I don't think they bothered much with the French. They didn't really expect it to happen. It's become the, this has become the main position of the opening. Like there are six games in this now. Through Petrov, through French. Yes. No, it's a, I, I actually a memorable game for me. I beat Jordan here with Black. Oh yes, in this Vikanze. Yes. And we cover it in our in our course. We covered it in French defense. That is the game we saw. Remember, he oh, played a piece. Yes. Oh really? Yeah, we yes, did. Yes, yes. We remember he he you, queen f six move you played and we we discussed it yeah in the course, yeah yeah ah we we did that yes, for the ah yes. uh, oh, okay 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 yeah. yeah 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 no I played the French yes the this time yeah that's why that's for sure uh, one more idea till it goes yeah there's one more is this one I thought maybe it was. Uh, the most surprising game not opening but the game result for me because prague lost this with white against hikaru yeah and i thought this was a very big result for hikaru like this basically took away prague's chances and well it's very hikaru simple i can tell you what happened hikaru prepared for round one against fabi who was completely terrified of prep completely terrified so he prepared these uh, crazy systems. E5, no, he played this. E5 in the Sicilian. Yes. And if Fabi goes D4 to play this D5, C5 thing. Ah. So, so he prepared some super drawish, super uh, desperate systems against Fabi, against E4 and against D4. Then at some point he played uh, Nijat. He realized, okay, I guess Nijat is not going to do this. It's too much. It's just going to be a draw anyway. Why to waste it? And then he played Prague. He kind of had to win, but he thought, okay, Prague also has to win, so let's throw this one out. So he used it, and actually, remarkably, he even won. Like, this is, uh, yes. it is an ultimate drawing weapon, but it's crazy he got to win. But of course, it's normal. When White is playing for a win also, that's how you get chances. Mm. Got it. Wow, what a deep insight there that he may have. He In his interview, he said he prepared this one month ago, but could be against Fabi. Yeah, I mean, I I guess so. Uh, for the, I mean, mod, I, like Fabi plays e4 mostly, but okay, in case he would go d4, he would have it ready. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh... <laughs> I can't. <laughs> the game is not starting, and <laughs> we are doing more and more. Yeah. yeah. C6 by Vidit against Hikaru. Yeah, it's epic move order. And I think epic this is order. the this actually gave Vidit a. Uh, very big win this move yes he was waiting he's basically not letting rookie one bishop of one regroup happen this is the idea ah. but do, but do you think like if next time white goes he will try this for an advantage uh well computer anyway says uh, uh on some depth that it's equal as knight g6 anyway mm. gives it a sequel because the d6 pawn you play around it is very weak apparently knight on b1 is very bad with the pawn on c3 blocking it uh -huh. that's the issue so apparently this works for black. Of course, before before good computers, people would never, people would never dare to do this. Mm. But now they do. They do. Okay, sir, I managed to get a game with uh, with Gotham. Wow. Okay. It started. 
Uh, yes. yes, yes, yes. I can see it. I can see it. Wait. Let me, guys. I'll show you so we can follow the game together with Anish's. I can comment it and maybe Anish can. Also... Hey, hey, play, 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 play. Go some play, play, play. Game out of board. This out of board in the chess.com is a crazy feature. I mean, uh, crazy, yeah. Not gonna be like somebody making some jokes here, but uh, strange. This feature, this. <laughs> Doesn't let you wait a minute. The leeches is the same. They also don't let you wait. Come on, come on, come on. Should I call him? Ah, no, it's a, he says the challenge went through, but still not working. Ah, the board is not working. Okay. Guys, the higher the tech, uh, the harder it is to get it to work. It's all experimental, high tech. Okay, Levy got a draw here. His uh, historic, historic. Uh, I got, I got a draw against Anish. Like he's gonna make a video about it. Like he's gonna, he's gonna be the thumbnail. I drew. You know, I drew three, five exclamation marks. Uh. Okay, sir. Yeah. I think if this doesn't work out, Anish, maybe at some point you also have to go back to your life, yes? To my life, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think kids, it's uh... your family, so perhaps you had limited time, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not true, true. If not for Sagarsha, guys, my uh... <laughs> my personal, uh, I'd be in trouble. Okay, last, Le Levi wants last thing, last attempt. Okay. So while Levi tries to fix that, let me see if I can pull yes. up another position this wow is... both joined 10 minute pool crazy what uh crazy idea okay ah there there is an event created just for two of you yes and then you join no but okay the there's like 240 thousand what 240 thousand people playing and levy thinks me and him are going to match I don't know, like... <laughs> 240,000 people playing. Guys. Most people playing... Most people playing 10-minute chess. There's no chance we're going to match in the pool. But maybe if we click... Uh, at the exact same time. 10 plus 5. Okay, let's do that. Uh, 10, 10 plus five. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Okay. Well, uh... hilarious. Anish, what <laughs> were your thoughts on the yeah. move knight H2 by Nepo here. Do you think it was like a very yeah, epic. big move? Epic. Epic, yes. Uh, my favorite ideas are the ones that have some point. And this one it has a point of going at 4 or 5. Of course, the knight on h2 is clearly... It is... You know what's the problem with the knight? It serves only one function. It plays against h5, correct? Yes, but it defends the g4 point. But it only serves one function you normally want a piece to serve more than one function on a position full of pieces. Mm. So it felt a little bit, a little bit suboptimal. That's why it was not played before, but still it had a very clear idea of going at four or five. So yeah, I liked it. Of course, what white would ideally prefer is to go knight h4, f4 and bring the king to g3. The knight on h4 is supporting the f5 push ah, much more. Yes. But there was no time for it. Knight h4 I would guess. be met with h5, right? H5, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Knight, so knight h2 is pretty cool. But Vidit played well, by the way. Vidit, uh, Vidit was fine. You know what? Uh, you can click the game. You know what was the decisive moment? Click through the game. Yeah, no, g5 was cool, very cool. So it was all unclear. Um, both sides could improve. a3 was not accurate according to the computer. So it continue, continue. Continue, continue. So we played h5, very cool move. Uh, rook brought the rook. Not so, not, was not so bad in after all. Yeah, so brought the rook. It worked out well after g6. Take, take, rook d8. 
No, no. So, so, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Can you can you go a few moves back? No, no. Rook, rook b5 was a mistake. Ah. Can you go a few moves back? C4, No, no. Yes. Rook, b, rook b5 was correct. Rook b5 was correct. Bishop c1. C4. This is... You know what? I of course, asked C4. both what happened of there? them after the game to with it and to Nepo and they both said it felt like a strategic error to them. Yeah, because... In the pawn end game, sort of, it would so have been. So both said but... knight f3. And then yeah, I said h4, h4 and rook. And they said yeah. king g2. And they both felt like, oh, this white is better. But I have a computer no, plus understand. one for black. You know, Grishuk saw it without computer also. This. Uh, yeah, but you know, okay. Yeah. No, no, I got some noob here. <laughs> Anish, by the way, Anish is explaining the most complex of opening and uh, middle game ideas of candidates while trying to match his game with Levy. So I don't know uh, how he's doing it, but it's not easy. Oh, I managed. But let's see if it will work. Let's see if it will work. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, again, I matched. Okay, Levy has <laughs> the white pieces. Yeah, he has black pieces here. Okay, we can abort and rematch. For all those who are joining in right now, you can also follow Oh, he made stream. a move. Oh, he made? He made the move. But it's not come here on the screen. Yeah, yeah, I see it. You see it? Yes. Okay, it's working, it's working. Okay, guys, epic. Let's play quickly. Somehow, niche on YouTube, watch. Okay, epic. Oh, so I'm going to play oh, the London. It's working. Yeah, let's go. I'm going to play the London. Okay. That's how we roll. London is covered on our opening course. I probably uh, talk something bad about it there, but it's, uh, you know, explain the ideas. He's uh, insisting on uh, not controlling this square. So I'll develop this knight and just go for e4. Mm. Probably. Mm. Now you transposed it into Jobawa, yes? Yeah. Uh, well, it's going to transpose to a pirk of sorts, probably. Probably I'll go e4 at some point, and then it will get some sort of a pirk. Structure. By the way, he's playing 50 minutes, 15 minutes plus some increment, no? <laughs> you know, it was funny because Kramnik was, wrote something about joining the stream at some point yes. or on Twitter. Yes. You know, if he would join now, he yes. would say, okay, guys are both in headphones. They're talking about the game. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had invited him. He mentioned that he will join at some other point. Uh, he uh -huh. cannot join today. So. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I think he was bluffing. I called his bluff. I think he writes that he wants to join. Uh, he's trying to, like, he's kind of trying to, to sort of get into uh, a conversation with me, sort of, <laughs> on Twitter, <laughs> to then bring attention to his issue that he wants to discuss. You understand? <laughs> He's trying to farm my comment comment bots for he's, for his. He's using uh, your technique against you. <laughs> yes. No, one of the most brilliant marketing strategies that Anish has used until now, and I'm in complete awe of it, was when Prague had won the World Cup and was at the peak of his sort of followership. He said, "Like something, 10k likes. I I take a selfie with Prague at yes, Grand yes. Swiss, and then yes. that got 10k." And then he took a selfie and then he said, give this some number of likes. So I released the selfie. Then he got, the... <laughs> then the selfie got something. No, but that was the time where uh, I was briefly confused. I forgot my best friend actually was Gukesh, of course. I just forgot. So I <laughs> completely, I mean, I don't know what happened to me. I had some blackouts. I just, uh, my, of course, I was, my best friend was, of course, was. So I played it not very well this opening because... Uh, if you play a4 after a6, then it's harder to castle long. So now I castle short and we just play a position. And black should be quite comfortable here. Yeah, what so yeah, what uh, went wrong here, by the way? 
well nothing too wrong but i basically uh went a4 early ah. and now i can't castle long anymore got it you wanted to do queen d2 and long castle okay yeah but somehow here i was already thinking he's going to hit me uh he's going to hit me with b5 you know yes. but i should have gone e4 here a4 was not accurate mm -hmm. and i knew it knight b4 okay this is a good move i'm gonna play here I'm going oh. to try to surround the knight nice he has this c5 idea very often but then you can move your knight from c3 back and c3 might trap the knight no on on b4 uh, yeah that's a that's an idea i was thinking about as well but i have to be very careful um Mm. Because you I have to be very careful, make pawn. sure it works. You have to be careful. Yeah, yeah, because there, there are all kinds of tactics there. But it's definitely an idea I was considering as well, for sure. By the way, we had a super chat. Hikaru, love you. Are Archit, bye. Hikaru, nice. We also had some more super chats. I should at some point uh, read them, but I'll read it later. Levi probably recording some epic video right now as we speak, <laughs> uh, where he is, you know, uh, He's saying... but it's currently being recorded currently being recorded by the way did you see his uh yeah c6 is good now your uh idea you, i was thinking already that you mentioned that doesn't work anymore uh can start with rook a4 he'll go c5 can then play knight b1 very desperately trying to win a piece knight e4 and c3 yes could work huh let's see let's see let's try I don't see why it doesn't work right now. It, I I feel it shouldn't work. You yes, know? because because you know what will happen. You will take C B four. You will lose the B two pawn. Something yes. like you will, yes, he will exactly. win few pawns, right? Exactly, exactly. But but uh, the way I see it, like so far, I can also just take. But I yeah, let's try. But somehow the, all the things that I see, wherever he he should do it very carefully because if he just takes two pawns, I'll be better. But he can try to be smart. He can go B five somewhere. Uh, in the variations, mm. he can try to, he can go e5 somewhere in the variations, bishop d7 somewhere, intermediate move. He has all these intermezzos. Let's see how, very he, artificial. how he deals with it. This is interesting, actually. What you've done is, if uh, if there is a super GM uh, sitting opposite you, he will understand the gravity of the situation and play those moves. But will Levy also play that way is the question. Will the super IM yes. do that? Yes, that's the good one. Good yeah, answer. you know, maybe it's actually quite good for me. I don't know. But like, it doesn't feel that way. You shouldn't be. This is a bit uh, unnatural. This, this shouldn't be so strong. Guys, uh, two versus one is not happening here because the only thing I can do is reduce Anish's strength here. So maybe I will not suggest any moves. I'll just uh, listen to him. Yeah, but guys, this is um, this is a content game, and uh, okay, we both have. Uh, Levy is aware, yeah, what's uh, what's happening as well. So it's it's fine. It's fine. Nice. This is like a friendly game here, uh, where the friends are me and Sakar. Saka. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but this is fine, guys. Uh, it's all good. But it's true. You mentioned ninety one move. I actually, of course, I saw about ninety one move before you mentioned it. Yeah, I was thinking sure, about it. Sure. Night was it was very. Uh... I you know what I've realized this. Yeah. If I get an idea, it is very very likely ninety nine point nine percent that the G that that the player of your caliber will see it. Like so. There is no doubt uh, that you did not. It see depends it. on the type. On it depends on like in the opening stage, especially in my case. Very likely that I yeah. saw the motif as well, yeah. No, and of course, of course, the, the night on before here it is screaming for this, yeah. Like it's, it is trapped completely. So it, that's why I played also a five. Like it's screaming to be trapped. Yeah. So uh, I did see number one idea, but I'm not sure. I, well, I think what it is may the be variation actually... which worries you here from black, like because it feels like you are going to push c three. Is there a? I don't see there? the. I don't see the issue by the way, honestly. Ninety four c three. I don't see the issue. So maybe you just got a good position, yes? I think so. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I I don't doesn't feel like that to me, but maybe I don't see the issue. Uh, maybe e six c three. So if e six if c three e d c b d no, but then even just 
D knight D2. Yeah, it looks uh, looks better for, for white. Everything looks better for white. Some bishop D7 has to be inserted. Yeah, yeah bishop D7, uh, even maybe C3. But okay, bishop D7, rook, rook A1 was the move I was calculating. Bishop D7, rook A1. Yeah. And I D4, C3. And then I'm threatening to take. Again, I don't see the don't see the, the move. Wow. Guys, did you see how uh, the knight got trapped without any oh he played e6? Yeah, that's the move I mentioned. Uh yeah, I can't even think about taking and taking, but I yeah. uh think yeah. the more ambitious to try and trap the the knight. Because you could take on e6 and take on d6, right? Yeah, but then but then the knight always has a c6 square and uh I don't know. I want to. I want to. You know, he of course wants to save the knight at all costs, and I want to take that knight. And I'm not too worried about ED, CBD, because I'll only have. I'll have. Uh, he'll have only two pawns. I got some super chat with th saying thank you, Hikaru. I don't know why. Yeah, we collected the piece. He's got two pawns, uh, but it's it's not enough, I think. It's not enough uh, because knight is usually worth three pawns. Uh, not enough. This is a typical idea, by the way, uh, but somehow he had to play... Maybe he had to play... Direct e6? And then after rook a4, you know, Sagar, he will he wasted the whole move with c6. Ah, he could have played direct. Yeah, true. true. Some other move, and then true. after uh, rook a4, c5. He could have gone e e6 there. Yes, e6, rook a4, c5. Yes, I think that's what went wrong. Mm. Nice, nice game actually. Very nice, very instructive. Uh, yeah, I'm curious if he'll be able to drum up. Actually, he has got this knight d5 idea. But I will probably take queen e4 there. And if he goes knight d5 directly, which is also possible, there should be some... Uh, there are some other issues. e4 pawn hangs, for example. No, but knight d5, f4 bishop is hanging, right? Uh, knight, d5, knight d5, bishop g4, you mean? Ah, knight d5, f4. bishop g4, knight f4, knight e4. Yeah, mm -hmm. I thought knight e4, f5. I thought, mm, worst case, I have knight d6, fg, and queen b3, and knight f7, worst ah, case. Okay. But uh, uh, there must be some other things as well here hanging. Clearly. Clearly must be other. Yeah, they're in that position, it's just very overwhelming. So I think he's uh, not doing great, yeah? Because this b4 pawn, it is, you know, it is on the side, but it's still kind of fighting for the center a bit mm. by mm. hitting the c5 pawn. Yeah, fighting for the center is a thing, yeah, Sagar? That is an interesting thing. We talk about it on the course, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and that is also a thing in 960, usually. Fight for the center. In some other uh, 960 games, Sagar, uh, it is a priority sometimes to block opponent's piece. Let's say knight on h8 or queen on queen in the corner, knight in the corner. You're trying to block it. But the way chess pieces are placed in the starting position, you cannot block any of them. So the only priority you have is fight for the center. Mm. That's the only one. Mm. But yeah, I think, uh, Anish, I would really be interested to see at some point, you trying chess 960. You played, right? Yeah, I played against uh, Wesley So in a match. Um, was very, world? very hard. Where, He's a very strong one? player. 960. In uh, a match in, in uh, St. Louis. I got invited to 960 tournament only once. Probably with Bishop D7. But you never that... played the World Championship? But there were... Ah, it was oh, I played the qualifier. I played the qualifier. By the way, I got very far. I got very far. I, I beat Rapport. Uh, Georg Meyer, I beat. Um, I beat Eric Hansen. Did you lose to Nodirbeck or what in that? Yeah, match? final. I played the final match against Nodirbeck and it was a very close, tight match. Uh, we went to Armageddon. Mm. We went to Armageddon. Yeah, this one was hanging. Now he's got only two pawns. We went to Armageddon and uh, I lost the Armageddon. Oh, by the way, now he can do knight d5 and b2 is also. Ah, BD6, but D6 sorry. is hanging. Sorry. Yeah. So now he's got, you see this pawn is blocking, so he's got 
Only it doesn't have any pawn mass. Also knight c4. Only isolated like, pawns. Yeah, you just get knight yeah. c4 and d6 is yes. weak. Yeah, now yeah, it's yeah, no, it, it's like it. It's you know almost feels like I have compensation you, you, for two you, pawns. Even if you had one piece less, you had compensation. Exactly. Now you have extra piece. That's, yeah, exactly, exactly what I'm trying to say. And now I'm forcing a queen trade. Right. Collecting an extra extra horse here. One question was asked, do you think that if Nodirbek was playing in this field, he would have done well? He could have done well. I don't know, would have, he could have easily done well. Yeah, easily. Nodirbek and Gukesh, very similar. Uh, very similar players in some way. Also, the way in which they sit on the board is similar with that mindset of, you know, like... Yeah, that they, have that, they have that thing. I think they are maybe inspired by Carlsen, maybe. In what way? In that they behave uh, during tournament like they are weirdos a little bit, like you can just be oh, normal, you know, nice. walk around. Yeah, yeah, it was nice. Uh, walk around, um, just play and then be normal, you know, outside tournament. But they are during tournament like they are not looking uh, at anyone. They're not saying hi properly. They're not doing a small talk. Talk just you know you you I see you in hotel. Say hi. How are you doing? How was your flight? How was the weather outside? Talk a bit about, you know, how was your, uh, how are your friends doing? Speak for three minutes. Say, okay, good to see you. Good luck tomorrow. I have a nice idea for you. Novelty, I'll crush you tomorrow. See you. Bye-bye. Instead, they come, okay, we're not talking, you know, they're going like something special. Okay, tournament's going on. They don't say hello. But before and after say the hello, tournament, you know? you, they will be different. No, no. Yeah, yeah. After tournament finished. Oh, now they can be normal. Thank you very much. You can now tell me hello. Oh, thank you. I was waiting all tournament till you told me hello. Thank you very much. Okay, tell me now how you are doing. How's your family? Like, I mean, what is this? Seriously, we'll play tournament in two days again. So you can, if you don't want to say hello, never say hello. Just don't say hello then. <laughs> what is this? Seriously, like something special is happening during, during tournament. What now? During tournament? Like, you know, during tournament, you don't go to toilet during tournament or what? You don't uh, eat or like everything you I do. Think, like, I also... think what happens with them or maybe just my thinking is some thought is put in their head by someone saying something and they don't want that to happen. Like, let's say if I meet and I said, hey, how is your uh, uh, studies going? You know, something like that. School. Yeah. And they'll be like, oh my God, school. And then they'll start thinking and they don't want to get that thought in their head at all. That's why I use Twitter because uh, I can write how is your school Gukesh on Twitter and then yes. <laughs> but some really smart ones they're not even looking on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, but you know you're only really strong not when you push away the thoughts, but when the thoughts can come at you and you can still handle them. That's wow. when you're really strong. Anish, you are, the you are dropping some really deep things today about friendship yes, yes. first, now about uh, thinking unbelievable. Uh, okay, guys. Uh, so yes. Levy got his knight trapped <laughs> for content, or no, no, just because okay, he just got it trapped. <laughs> knight b1, and then no compensation here. There's no compensation at all. H3 final nail, nail in the coffin. So, um, yeah, no, but they are, of course, can, uh, we can ask Levy to join, no, then at the end, just yeah. to say yeah, bye. Yeah, let's join, yeah. Okay, there are some tech issues. Uh, well, we should get Levy so that we can afterwards screenshot his head and use it for thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him to make some facial expressions for thumbnail. Uh. But Anish, where are you going next now? Where will uh, we see you in action? Yeah, I'm playing Grand Chester eh, still. Oh, Grand Chess uh, 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there you will meet exciting. Bukesh, actually. Oh, I will, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, my best friend, of course. He's coming. <laughs> <laughs> where you guys will talk about the weather and all, but only yeah, after yeah. the Yeah, no, me and Bukesh, you know, always. Very, very like, oh, how are you doing? Oh, by the way, by the way, wait, wait. While you say this, let me just... I have something, you know, I was just searching uh, for, like I put Anish in my uh, explorer and I thought, okay, what are the pictures which turn up, right? Like Anish, because I have, I cover many events and so on. So I save pictures and all, you know, what came up? Mm -hmm. 
can you see it yes and this is yeah no me and is, my friend gukesh talking this is almost about life. about the tournament was about to begin so there i think you guys were still talking no no but i'm trying to get in their head of these kids i'm just trying to break them <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to talk i'm going to talk you don't want to say hi i say hi i do the stare down hello how are you doing now how now now you know handle it handle it deal with it how was your flight yes how was your flight tell me yeah i'm going to crush you by the way chandresh chakresh singh has said wanted to ask anish if he gets existential thoughts and how he handles them do you get it anish uh i don't know what it is so probably not <laughs> existential thoughts are basically why am i alive or you know what does life what is life's meaning and stuff like that oh definitely i mean life not but like what is like the meaning of the why am i here on the stream for sure like <laughs> 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 definitely <laughs> So well, Levi, yes, today is super glitching. Oh, he's finally here. He's here. He's here. Levi, you need to turn on your camera. Yeah, yeah. You would think that Levi and camera, at least after becoming the biggest YouTuber on earth, he would finally know how to turn on camera. Oh, look Hi at guys, him. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> guys, I've been filming some stuff. Why are and you not broke... sitting on a chair? <laughs> oh no, I am. I'm. I'm. I'm on a chair. But you know, I was in a suit. It was going to oh, be a beautiful good. piece of footage. And then, um, the board. Yeah, this uh, beautiful board, unfortunately, had some bugs. And um, but it's difficult. This high tech, you know, always the high tech. Is this the the one they advertise on Chess.com now? Is it that one? I'm afraid if I say yes, people uh. will be. Dis I mean, this is the first, literally the first one. Like it's a prototype. Uh, prototype. So last night I played a blitz game. And I was mm -hmm. winning, but I lost on time because it's kind of hard to play Blitz on this thing. And today was going pretty well, but uh, then it didn't register your move. And that's my excuse. That's why I hung my night. I was, uh, you know, I was like really stressed. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, you never hang any nights, yeah? From what I remember. No, this is, I think, uh, you know, you can talk to the, you can talk to the stats. The, I, I think that was the first night I've ever blundered. The first night ever. <laughs> but yeah. what, what, One night what, stand, as they call books? it. Yeah, yeah. Levy on the on your left, like there is yeah. a huge stack of books. Yes, uh, that's because my tripod is uh, broken, and I needed. <laughs> you see, I don't Levy, feel your chair. You are sitting like you are sitting on some kind of baby toilet or something. Yeah, it's, it's because this is a desk that moves. Oh wow! Oh, oh wow. now now we are impressed. High tech, Levy. Okay, impressed. respect. Oh yes. wow! So wow. no, the board the board is actually very cool. Um, and it it's coming out in six months, so it will be functional. Uh, don't take it from me. Take it from the the company that had a very successful first product. But um... Anish, what are you doing? Like, how are you going upwards? My desk also moves. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Guys, yeah, you gotta you gotta get a desk that moves. Yeah, yeah, I can stand on it. I mean, oh, not on it. Next, be, beside, like stand on it oh, on it's beside it. Desk. Mm. You guys had a yeah, good show. Uh, we we talked some uh, candidates thing. Okay, we we gotta wrap up because the time is up. But I want to hear your take. So who is going to win the candidates? Hmm. I can show you the. Parents. I mean, I gotta I gotta I gotta, no, I gotta go with heart. Hikaru, right? Okay, he's gotta go with Hikaru. He's gotta go with Hikaru. Fair, At this fair. point, my my real answer is I have no idea. But I did see a nice thing today, which is Hikaru is the only guy who controls his own destiny because he plays the two guys in first place. Ooh. So. No, but the other two, no, but the other two, <laughs> also, if they win two games, they also control their own destiny, right? Yeah, you I mean, suppose, he can... but, yes, but you can, like, win and somebody else has to beat somebody else, like uh, Fabiano, uh, I don't even know who he's playing. No, no, but come on, Levi, like, Gukesh, if Gukesh wins all the games from now on, he will win two, then he will win the tiebreak, he will also win. Anish, so they... I stole a talking point I saw on Twitter. I didn't really look too much into it, so no. But it's like at least if it was Reddit, yeah. I mean, Twitter is full of trash. Yeah, there's not a relevant. Uh, they're both, they're, they're both, they're both pretty bad. I got in a little trouble yesterday on Reddit. I don't know if you saw. Um, I, uh, I when I interviewed Vidit, I made a joke when I in the first minute, and I said, you know, candidates always has some drama. Like if you go back, each candidates, there's always some drama. And I and I mentioned how in like the 2018 candidates, there was all this nonsense with Grishuk's piss bottle. Oh yeah. <laughs> which was fake, like that wasn't, a, and he he clarified, but in the interview with Vidit, I didn't like quite fully emphasize that it was no, fake. No, but you know, uh, it's a big question is whether Grishuk, he knew what he was doing. What did not. he do, by the way? 
he was carrying that bottle with like group but like with the like green tea or whatever but it i think he realized full well what it looked like but he didn't pretend that, that he didn't you know or not or he didn't so that's the thing nobody knows like of course it was just a tea but nobody knows if he did that whole thing on purpose or not because grishik of course he's meta you know mm -hmm. he's uh he's yeah. thinking that so i made a comment like that and was obviously not saying that he carried piss around but I didn't fully clarify that, like, mm -hmm. uh, and so yeah, Reddit was a little upset with me, and nice, um, nice yeah. Job. So basically, it was not, not a piece in a bottle, but storm in a cup, yeah. Or it is, <laughs> it's not an English impression. It's a yeah, Russian expression. I, I, storm in a cup, I think. Um, all I know is none of that is happening at this candidate's. Oh, we only have some drama with creaky floors and shoes and stuff. So yeah, yeah I don't think anything. Mounting. Okay, so Hikaru. Okay, guys, I'm going with Gukesh Sagar. Your prediction, and then we are signing off. Yeah, I want to also go with Gukesh here. Yeah, you uh, have to, of course. Yeah. Now you're lucky. The no. other Indians are out. <laughs> yeah, it's a you shock. have no choice. <laughs> no, the thing is, I'm very happy because when I came to Toronto, I was like, how many rounds can the Indians keep up? Because naturally you have Nepo, uh, you have uh, Nakamura, you have uh, these top guys. But they have kept it up till 13th round now. So it's almost like till the penultimate round, there's interest. Yes. Which is amazing. No, people are asking in my chat uh, about Vidit's play. Okay, Vidit played amazing, of course. Uh, he came very close. But okay, sometimes you put everything, you know, you go all in. And then it either falls or falls against you. And basically, he put all in at some point and it, you know, the wrong card came out. And now he's out. Yeah. So sometimes, yeah, you go all in and then uh, he don't hit. And then, then you are out a little bit earlier, but... The only guy that has not suffered a heartbreak or like a massive turnaround or a huge emotional letdown is Nepo. Multiple candidates in a row. Like Gukesh had this heartbreaking loss to Alireza. Hikaru had some crazy games against uh, Vidit. And, uh, and Nepo just keeps cruising, man. He just like... This Nepo yeah. game against yeah, Vidit, but I was he's... screaming. I was screaming at my TV. I was no, but like... of course, but it's like it's his plays kind of relative to others is a little more shaky so it can happen any moment yeah it's clear like it's it's in the air he's sort of any moment something can go wrong in his tournament it's clear like it's it's very shaky very very shaky he's going around you know around uh, a loss for many rounds doesn't like he's going around the hole and he never falls in there but he keeps going around it very tricky anish i have a question i know you said you have to go so my question yeah. is kind of putting you on the spot um when i was watching this vidit game um, there was the two moments he could have played h5, right? And then he could have played knight takes d5. Yeah. And knight d5 simplifies into this winning endgame. Yeah. H5. So to me, h5 was very tough to find, especially yes. maybe, yeah, like very tough. I mean, I was getting mm -hmm. very upset actually at people in the chat, like, I'm an amateur and I saw h5. No, you yeah. didn't. Uh, but knight d5 seemed quite findable because he had like seven minutes, I think. I mean, mm -hmm. I think, but he just maybe didn't expect to be winning. Maybe he saw cd5. So I don't know. Should you expect Vidit to find him? No, but you know what was the weird part? Uh, I watched um, the footage afterwards, and after the game, he says, I was winning with H5. Immediately. He just he says, immediately. Immediately. like the first thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and that is the line is so hard. Yeah, yeah. You walk your king over there, and yeah. yeah. Like, how did he see that? And when did he see that? That's, by the way, a very bad sign if you see something after the game. Like, it means that you were thinking about the position after the time control, maybe. Like, mm -hmm. this is such a no go. Like, I, mean, I almost never do that. Uh, and you have to really avoid it because you should really only focus about the upcoming problems. And after the game, you should not be think knowing what you did wrong yeah, normally. I mean, only think about the next move. Mm. I don't know when he, maybe he thought, I don't know when he saw that, but he didn't see the other win. Yeah, it happens very often when you have, especially when you have limited time, you just take a decision. You cut off the variation too early. And of mm. course, in that line, so it goes like, bishop takes a3, you have to go king b5. Yeah. And then the guy can play e4. If you take on a5, there's bishop c5. So you have to go c4, a4, c5. And then you, you have an optical kind of illusion thing that maybe you think your pawn queens first, but then after you queen, the other guy queens with a check. And then you get a queen endgame, which is winning. So it was kind of a long line. It's like 14 move long or something. I calculated at some point. Uh, but it's a very long line. But um, he's capable of it. But of course, you know, high pressure situations. In high pressure situations, unless uh, like a rook is hanging or something, uh, People mm -hmm. can always make mistakes. And remarkably, he saw well, the first win, he said. Yeah, he's, he just said it. I mean, uh, that I, that's, I found shocking. How did he see it? It's insane. The line is, the, the move is very natural, but you have to give up the c4 pawn, then go with the king to e6. It's, and to evaluate that as winning, that's very cool. 
Yeah, but yeah, he very hard. Okay, to be fair, of course. Okay, if he won that game, he would be uh, in the race, but he would have to win many more games to win the tournament, right? So, yeah. Okay, it's yeah. Like... I mean, H five. I thought is completely unnatural. Like you lose all your pawns, uh, but yeah, the idea to go HG king f five and black is just losing is kind of crazy. But... Yeah, uh, well, amazing. He saw it. Gets in, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, and you go to f seven, like f seven even, and then rook h one is made. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's beautiful. But also, yeah. I asked uh, Nepo about d five, and he said, "Oh, it's losing." Uh, yeah, okay, I I don't know. I mean, I just thought I'm winning a piece. So, yes, he he didn't even. No, it's very it's, it's somewhat yeah, and, counterintuitive. If yes, yeah, land goes e four. Yeah, c four. C four, a four, and then you go c five. Yeah, take, take, and then, yeah, you queen, yeah. But actually, I mean, this is... Yeah, and by the way, this you still have to win. It's not so trivial. Yeah, of course, of course. But okay, this he would, of course, uh, manage somehow. But uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's hard, it's hard. Uh, especially time pressure and the pressure in general. I mean, people make all sorts of mistakes and you make a mistake which is uncharacteristic. So things that you can handle normally, you stop handling. It's just normal. Like chess is game played, you know, it's in the brain. And the brain, when in pressure situation, it just malfunctions. It's everybody's malfunctions, but uh, one of the players wins eventually. That's you, how it works. You know, Anish Levy, I feel like this tournament kind of fixes Anish's, uh, sorry, uh, with its spot as one of the elite GMs, no? Because... He really was there. He was win. He beat Nakamura twice. He was winning against Fabi. He pushed Nepo. Like until now, of course, he is one of the best. But this tournament, he was just was playing at equal level with everyone. Exactly. Uh, exactly. That. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, uh, if not been for the other Indian players, uh, you know, it would be like it could have been. Let's say that. It would be that India gets an established uh, absolute top player, but uh, now it gets a bunch, and he's one of them, uh, which is uh, amazing to keep up with these um, youngsters. You know, uh, it's really amazing, and uh, with all the prep that he he did for the tournament, I'm sure Vidit will yeah. show many good performances in the in the coming future. True. True. That idea that he played in the uh, anti Berlin, like this C6 against Hikaru, did you know it? Uh, no. No, I don't think I knew it. Uh, it's, I mean, it's in a certain direction where I wasn't really going in a, for a while. Uh, mm. But yeah, it is the it's the kind of uh, setup that he has prepared for the tournament, of course. Also, his game with Fabi was quite similar yeah. yesterday. Ninety-seven, yeah. Yeah, he prepared this uh, the setups, but uh, against Hikaru, we worked better than against uh, Fabi. Okay, guys, thank you for joining. Yes. It's been great fun. Thank you, Anish. Thank you, Levi, for coming in for the end and uh, see you soon. Yeah, see you guys. Sagar, are you, are you ending also? Or are you going to bring Same and stream for another four hours? <laughs> <I don't know>. anyway. <laughs> Generally, last time it was like, bye, guys, see you. And then suddenly, title yeah. Tuesday began, Vidit was yeah. playing, and then one thing led to another and so on. Yeah. Well, if Hans and Kramnik and Magnus and Obama show up, uh, please let me know. I will join. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> Guys, that was Anish Giri, Levi Rosman. Very nice stream. Very fun stream. I think had a lot of elements. Candidates breakdown. We also spoke about the opening course with Anish. We spoke about... Uh, uh, the opening ideas which were there we took viewer questions of those who had bought the course and uh, we then played this game with levy then levy joined it it's amazing how uh, how so many things happen in like two hours or maybe more i guess i don't know how long maybe two and a half hours and before i go away uh, i just want to show you something new that we have launched and this is all courtesy of our team uh, which has launched it it's called the Two, two more chess sets that we have launched. So we had the premium chess set, which you know, which has been one of our best selling products. And then we said we need to bring in the Chespa chess set, which is like, uh, you know, has Chespa engraved on it. 
and there's a mini chess set which is what is this 10 uh, inches you know uh, 10 centimeter sorry guys i'm very bad at this uh, it's this size yeah um, and you can see there there is a combo where the books and all you can buy and then purchase any combo and get the chess pa chess set for only 599 so that is one chess pa chess set and i think on the back side you have the chess pa logo that is the point it's slightly smaller than normal and there is a tote bag free for 50 buyers and uh, or it's called tote bag i don't know how uh, and this is the chess pa chess set is for 699 but if you buy it as a combo you get it for a lesser cost and there's a mini chess set also which we have launched which is 549 it's a very uh, nice it's actually a travel chess set they call it uh, and uh, the mini chess set is here so you can actually get it i think the link is put in the description below so you can find out so basically what we wanted to do is give you multiple options so for kids i think chess pa chess set will do very well because there's a chess pa on it and they really like the character uh the premium chess set has been doing wonderfully i think sold so many chess sets and the mini chess set is a small cute little one i could we could also use it for your travel and the, you can see there's a phone next to it there on the right so the, the chess board is just uh, like as big as let's say this much you know if this is your phone then it's this size which is hmm, interesting Okay. Tote, tote, ho gaye. Are, dil tote. Guys, Samai, I think, uh, must be sleeping. Uh, he has a stream tomorrow, big one. Uh, I hope I can join, but we will see that stream. Um, and uh, read the super chats. Yes, let me read the super chats because I missed it and then I'll call it a night or call it a day. I have to go and sit and work. So we had uh, Omkar who became the pillar backer of Indian chess. Omkar, thank you for becoming backer of Indian chess. Pradeep Sadani, thank you for becoming member. Harsha Belur, Rahul Srivastav. We had um, Shiva Krishna who said, will there be chess base India sale anytime soon? Generally, we have it in May, mid-year sale. So yes, it will come in May. Prasad Duvuri says, what makes Nepo such a strong player at candidates? His defense, prep, talent or luck? He has not trailed in two candidates. Well, we discussed about him in this stream a lot. Um, I think he's just phenomenal, yeah, what he's able to achieve. I can't wrap my brain around someone losing a world championship match like he did against Carlson, then playing the candidates, winning, then losing against Ding in a world championship match where he was leading like throughout and then coming back again and fighting again. And I think he just believes in this thing that he's made for this greater things, you know, like, because if you see his tattoo on the hand, it is of a phoenix which says, I will rise up again. And he's living life in that kind of a storyline that no matter how many times I fall, I will rise again. And I think that's very inspiring. Aditya Ghosh. Uh, yeah, thank you, Aditya. Akash Tiwari says, Hans wants to join. Yeah, today, I think we couldn't get him, but uh, hopefully we will at some future streams. Uh, we will ask him to join. Uh, and definitely, I mean, I, I didn't see the tweet, but uh, it was wonderful to have him last time here on the stream because we already had a plan to uh, sort of promote uh, what Anish had made the course. I didn't want to involve him as well into it. Um, Bilal Molani said, I am missing Anish and Nodirbek in candidates. How Anish rates Nodirbek among young players? Actually, we spoke about it, Bilal. Uh, I think Nodirbek said, we, oh, Nodirbek could have, uh, sorry, Anish said Nodirbek could have done very well. Um, Himanshu, how aware are players in the last round of others' games? Oh, hugely aware. They'll keep walking around. There's a big screen showing all the games. They can just, it's right next to them. So they'll watch it a lot. Zahel, thank you for the super chat. Archit, thank you. Chakresh, yeah, existential thoughts. Anish did say uh, that he gets them, but we couldn't delve too deep into it. Ronak Mehta says, big fan. It was nice seeing you at Candidates. Any plans on exploring other cities while you are here? Check out Montreal. Also, when and where is the meetup? I have put a video, Ronak. It's at the Trinity Bellwoods Park. 
tomorrow at 11 a.m. Uh, so all those who are interested, please do join in. It would be fantastic to to have you all um, at this uh, meetup. I think it's the first ever meetup that Chess Base India is doing. Of any, I mean, there are many times we met fans and uh, people in different tournaments, but like a dedicated sort of, and it's happening in Canada. Travel with Nikhil Roshan. Glad to see that Levy won the Batman Award in chess. Oh, should have. Uh, spoken about it i don't know what it is ekan says oh yeah i didn't want to play against levy today but someday yes i think i should play i played with him actually here in the club we played three games he beat me twice i won one game uh, one of the games he crushed me in 18 moves it was terrible uh, i can uh, tell you he played i played karo khan and he played the fantasy variation and completely uh, smashed me so he's very strong he's in touch um yeah but i would love to play with him actually I also want to play more uh, just such games and uh, yeah travel with Nikhil Roshan thank you Sagarbhai for naming that chessboard after me I want to surely order that travel chessboard like Karde Dosto ah like the travel chessboard yes right ah Levy is here that game made, made me feel like Tal says Levy man he, he played that game so amazingly um, it is i don't know levy uh, i think i should put up that game i have it recorded uh it was like you know i was thinking he will put his bishop on g5 and that is already a very strong move so he touched his bishop and then put it on h6 and i had like one minute few seconds left and i was thinking what to play at least i should find and my time ran down i couldn't find a move at all and i got uh, brutally crushed there so that's a pretty game really Yes, this game I should put out. So maybe today is one of the work I should put that game out on the channel. So I should get to work. I have at least 20, 30 videos left to edit. I don't know how many I'll manage today, but I should use my energy carefully. That's uh, that's important. So yeah, Levy for GM says develop and Levy, if you are still here, uh, try it out, man. You should try to get your GM. You will inspire many, many people. And the same goes for me at some point. But right now, you are the stronger one there. And we have Amruta calling. Yes, Amruta. Uh, you have any chess set you can show to the people. You have to get autograph over there for the joke contest winner. Yes, yes. Uh, let me show the people. I have kept it in my bag, hopefully. Amruta is also following the stream, which is nice. Amruta doesn't follow streams generally. No, I, follow. I don't follow streams. I just came to see if everything is going fine and all. And uh, I didn't see Anish uh, right now here because I had a question to him uh, because how is his toilet building process going on? I was very curious about that. Did you ask him that? <laughs> no, no, I think he built it quite quickly. Oh, Amruta, I don't know where is my... Uh, one second, let me find out. Guys, this is the travel chess set. Or the mini chess set, as they call it. It's so cutie. It is cutie pie chess set. If you have little kids... Try to get it. It has this nice uh, logo. Yeah, it's very cool. And also I have the pieces somewhere. Mm -hmm. Chess. I think tomorrow for the meetup, I will use this chess set to play some games with our viewers. Guys, look at this. All chotu chotu pieces. So, check it out. Amruta, congrats for launching this. I think uh, kudos to you and everyone who is part of this project. Yes, yes. No, this is the... Uh... 
so we have launched as far as said so now for kids it will be easier to play with that uh, but sagar you didn't ask the question to anish which one next time that asked you know about the toilet ah, yeah yeah toilet i know he's made it amruta he's finished it he was very quick oh really yeah yeah Amruta, maybe we should end the stream now. <laughs> not, not. What are you talking, <laughs> guys? <laughs> guys, I will uh, end this stream because Amruta is going on another tangent here, completely different one. Uh, and who knows what will happen next? So. Yes. Call me afterwards. End the stream. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay guys see you then see you tomorrow and thank you all for tuning in bye bye where is the end button